Welcome back to another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt. It is a bi-weekly horror hotfix brought to you by GDQ. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. And before we begin, I just want to say that Frame Fatales will be having its next all-women speedrunning event, Flame Fatales, from August 21st to the 27th. Uh, the marathon schedule is currently out, and you can type exclamation mark FF in Twitch chat or go to gamesdonequick.com slash frame for more info. There's also prize submissions. You can check those out for more information on the site. Anyway, I hope you're all having a great day today, and I hope you're all doing well. Uh, like I said, we're back with another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt, and this week I thought we would kind of go to our roots a little bit here. Well, I guess not our roots specifically, but the roots of general horror. Because many times, whenever you have a successful franchise, eventually they want to go, what happened before that franchise? So, today's theme is prequels. We're going to be featuring a bunch of prequels of different games that you may or may not have known are prequels, so there's that. Uh, anyway, uh, to open things up and to start things nicely, we're going to be going into one of my favorite horror franchises, but not so one of my favorite games. Uh, we will be doing Silent Hill Origins featuring Punchy, which is a pretty unique run. So, anyway, take it away. Right. Hello, everyone. I'm Punchy. This is Silent Hill Origins, or Silent Hill Zero, because this is the Japanese version, and it's called Silent Hill Zero in Japan. That's about the gist of that. I'm also playing this on a PS TV, so I'm using a PS4 controller for a PSP game. People often ask me, what's the best version to play on? It's the PSP version. There is a PS2 port. You can't see anything, though. It's too dark. So, a uh, slightly weird hardware configuration for this game aside. Let us get going, and we can explain things as we go. Crank that brightness all the way up, and we'll begin in 3, 2, 1. Video games. Excellent. Right, so the initial question most people have about this run is, why the Japanese version, Punchy? What's going on here? Is it faster? No, it's just the version I have. That's that's the end of that. Like, this game was released in Japan. In fact, the Japanese version is the only version you can legally buy nowadays. It was pulled from the American PSN a very long time ago. But uh, the Japanese version is still there. So it's the one I bought, because it's the one that's there. <laughs> that's That's the extent of the depth of that. There are no version differences, the only difference is text. That's it. That's the whole deal with that. But yes, this is Silent Hill Origins, so this is a prequel game. We are playing Travis O'Grady here, who I constantly call Travis Touchdown, because there's only allowed to be one Travis in video games. We go to a burning house. We just kind of abandon our truck on the side of a road, head into a burning house. As you do. Very noble spirit, this Travis. We find a burning Alessa, although we don't know that currently, but this is like a prequel kind of deal, so the player knows that. Although, Silent Hill Origin status as a prequel is complicated because it contains plot details that are like so contradictory with the first game, they kind of don't exist in tandem. Ah, no, dude. New it's Silent right. Hill canon is. New Silent Hill canon is weird. I try not to think about it personally. But I feel like the people might want to know what's ostensibly going on. So carry a burning, burning guy out of the building. If you do that fast enough, you get an achievement at the end of the game and unlock a firefighter outfit. That was probably fast enough to do it, I imagine. And then we just collapse on the side of the road. And then Travis wakes up in Silent Hill and decides to go to a hospital. I am not sure why he does this. He just kind of looks at a map, I think, and is like, oh, a hospital. Maybe that girl was taken there. It is unknown why Travis cares so much. Just just a, just a noble spirit. Off to the hospital we go. And we are already tired. Right, so that is a mechanic you have to pay a lot of attention to in... Silent Hill Origins is that this game has a stamina mechanic. Most of the Silent Hills actually have a stamina mechanic, but in Origins it's particularly impactful, because as you see, he started running slower. There's something we can do about that. It will come up in a bit. But for now, just know that if you run for any particular length of time, eventually Travis will need to slow down and catch his breath. And it carries between rooms and everything, like it's a global variable that's kept track of no matter what you're doing. Right, flashlight is forced on for this. I want it off. This cutscene will force it back on again. I'm going to turn it off again. Ignore that nurse, go in this door. Try to leave immediately. Oh, overlap a cutscene with a text box, that's novel. 
skip a cutscene and we discover that Travis has the ability to travel to the other world by touching mirrors. That's this game's gimmick. Flashlight goes off again, as it that again forces it on. It is important to keep the flashlight off at basically all opportunities, because if the flashlight is on, enemies are incredibly aggressive to point of annoyance. Uh, but if it is off, they are virtually blind. They cannot see you, unless you are directly in front of them. Which makes it very easy to avoid damage, as long as you don't get directly in front of them. Take an egg. We need this egg later. It's important. Just trust me on that. I'm going to try to hit this without hitting the note, but we'll see how that goes. Nah, not quite. The angle is difficult. It defaults to no. Why does it do that? Three. You can input that solution without seeing it. That's like the sum of patient ages. You find it on a wall somewhere. Look, we already know, so we can collect a plastic heart. Oh, I should also note that despite appearances, this game is not a tank-controlled game. It is, in fact, controlled by pointing the stick in the direction you want to go, like a sort of normal third-person game, but you may be wondering how that controls when the camera is constantly making weird shifts like this. The answer is that it controls awkwardly. <laughs> Every single time the camera shifts like this, I have memorized the exact angle to point the stick in. Every single one of them. It was a painstaking process, <laughs> acquired over many hours of practice. And, uh... You know, someone asked in the, like, the Silent Hill speedrun Discord not too long ago how to not get owned by the camera angles when doing this, and I don't have better advice for that other than just memorize the camera angle. Right, don't get the toaster, don't get the toaster. No toast in this run, no toast. Victory over toast. The toaster is very difficult to avoid picking up, it, like, overlaps the key. But you don't want the toaster. We don't want a toaster. That's no good. The toaster is a weapon in this game, it's a throwing weapon. There are many throwing weapons in this game, they are all bad. You throw them once, and then you have nothing equipped. And it's like, well, that was productive. That's ri obviously ridiculous. Like, throwing toasters at things. No. Use, use a good old reliable knife or something. Like, who do you think you are? Solve the puzzle. Got to put the organs in in the right order. We get some eyes. You know, as one does. back to the other world. We have actually basically solved the, the stage already. Like, that was the main puzzle of the, of the set. All we need is to put the eyes in here. And we fight the first quote-unquote boss, although it's kind of a regular enemy. <laughs> All bosses get repussed into regular enemies later. Turn flashlight off. Walk around for a bit because he's in, like, QTE mode. Nope, didn't quite walk around far enough. Uh, enemies in this game don't actually have to hit you to activate slow, boring QTE sequences where you can do nothing but wait for the game to, like, let you play it again. Uh, they just have to sort of be in range, so you kind of try and run, run around that guy for a bit so that you sort of run out his, like, QTE clock. And then you stab him three times, and then you win. Except the stabbing is particular. There's a, there's a knack to this game's combat. You see I did three quick overhead strikes with the scalpel, right? That's a specific input. You have to click the stick and the attack button in the direction you are attacking in at the same time. If your angle is off, you will get a weak stab instead and you won't do anywhere near as much damage. And it's very particular about this. So executing three in a row is actually kind of a lot more picky than I made it look. It's just something you got to get used to. And you, you, you basically never want the weak hit in most boss fight contexts. But if you can master executing the strong hit, then, well, you're off to the races. You can kill very quickly. All right, we're going to pick up the stamina drink hidden behind a box. Literally not in camera frame. We're going to pick up this health drink. This health drink will almost certainly never be consumed. It's there to manipulate the item layout because of a fascinating quirk of this game's speedrun that I have not even completely solved yet. Uh, the item layout in this game is dynamic. Not random, as everyone seems to think. Dynamic. What spawns depends on what you've picked up earlier, but in no obvious correlation. <laughs> okay, so he's tired again, so I can use the stamina drink to refill his stamina, and he starts running again. That saves some time. That's the basic use of the green energy drink. It saves some time. Because you, you can recover from tiredness. That's, that's all of that. So the goal of the run is to spawn as many energy drinks as possible. And 
I've discovered the best way to do this through just blind experimentation, because there's no obvious correlation between action and result. So here there's a first aid kit and an energy drink. These seem to always be here no matter what you do. So you can rely on these spawns. But crucially, I mean, I guess I'll wait until we get there. But because I picked up that health drink earlier, a different item will spawn in a certain place where it would not have done if I hadn't picked up the item. The health drink in particular. Take a slightly what? There's an enemy just out of shot left of camera. So if you go straight, you will immediately get grabbed by it. And that is very unfunny. But if you give the enemies a wide enough berth, give them their space, you're good to go. Probably should get tired round about here-ish. I'll pop another energy drink for speed. Yep. He knows the timings. I actually set a new uh, world record in this game like two days ago because it dice was like, hey, do you want to do Origins for the hotfix? I was like, sure, I can de-rust that. Two days later, set a new record. It's de-rusted! I like to motivate people. <laughs> I de-rusted it, Ignite. <laughs> it's good. All right, mine the big guy. Those guys have a very large attack range. Do not trifle with them. And their attack method is comical. They just kind of headbutt you. Nope. Yep, sudden camera angle change, my favorite. Yes, this item spawn under the tree. It is an energy drink because I manipulated the spawn by picking up the health drink earlier. If you don't pick up that health drink earlier, that turns into another health drink. Which is not good. You don't want that. You want more stamina drinks. It saves the time. Health drinks don't restore basically any health. So, like, health drinks, they're no good. And now we're tired indoors. But being tired indoors is fine. We mostly use the stamina drinks in outdoor areas because for whatever reason, Travis recovers faster from his, like, tired state when he is inside. So we don't use energy drinks while we're inside buildings. Or at least that's how I've mapped it. The, the, the route of this game is, is frankly, like, at this point, about 60% of my own invention, so I'm kind of, like, making stuff up as I go here. <laughs> it seems to work. No one came up with a better idea. Alright, if I hold down at a very particular angle, I should be able to hit this without picking up the note. Not quite. It's picky. Solve a puzzle by pressing all buttons to overload an iron lung with pressure. I'm not sure if this is actually how iron lungs work. I don't really care. It spits out a key. Give me this key. There's an energy drink in the corner. That also would be a health drink if I didn't pick up the first health drink earlier. For some reason, picking up that one health drink earlier turns many future health drinks into stamina drinks instead. Reason? No clue. But it works. It's consistent, so just do it. And uh, lately, one of the reasons I was able to set a new record is that I, by accident I discovered a, a new item route because I picked up the wrong thing by accident, but it changed the whole layout in a way that was favorable, and I was like, hang on, this is strats. But uh, I haven't yet exactly nailed down the particulars of it. So this run will feature live experimentation with that. <laughs> As I am still not completely sure what causes some things to spawn. So uh, we'll get to make a discovery together, assuming I do things correctly. So there's another stamina drink here. This again would also be a health drink if I hadn't picked up the other health drink earlier. So you get you get three energy drinks for the, the price of picking up one health drink, which is a good trade. Yeah, by accident. I'll, I'll tell you the mistake. When we get there, I'll tell you what the mistake was. And how it turned into a and how it turned into strats instead. As this is a very recent development, right? So we're gonna go into hydrotherapy, flush a key. We're in a sanitarium right now. I didn't actually explain that. Travis just goes here. Travis, Travis isn't really like much of an active agent in the plot of Origins. He just kind of gets 
vaguely directed to go places and bumble through, he does. Picking up the toaster does not seem to change item spawns. No, I have ruled out the toaster from my calculation, so if you pick it up by accident, you're still fine. I didn't, so I don't have to worry about it, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter. It's weird that it doesn't matter, because lots of other things do, but toaster is meaningless according to Silent Hill Origins' item spawn logic. <laughs> Relax, man. Cruel. Alright, now we're gonna perform my favorite action in a Silent Hill game. I flushed the toilet. That was to flush a key to a bottom floor. We will go and pick up that key later. Dormitory key. I find it very funny how in the Japanese version all of the keys are subtitled in English because the signage isn't subtitled in Japanese. Just, just a little like localization tidbit there for you. The keys have their corresponding English nickname so that the player can like match them to the English signage because the signs are obviously untranslated. Just to, just to throw the Japanese players a bone. We've gained a key, we're heading back through this room. I've got to hold a very particular angle here because the camera loves to latch onto this map like that. When the camera angle suddenly changes, if you continue to hold the same angle, your angle won't change, but you have to make sure you do not touch the stick at all. Alright, here's the point of experimentation. This typewriter. I'm going to not pick it up. How will this affect the things? Let us see. it was not about typewriter. Oh yeah, also I gained a shotgun. That, don't worry about that. That'll come up later. I actually don't use gun very much in this run. But we do use gun at least once, and the gun is in fact impossible to avoid picking up, which is very convenient for run purposes. Like, normally it's a struggle to find enough ammo to, like, complete the game. This game makes it very difficult to not pick up enough ammo. <laughs> like, in the way. Right, venturing into the basement we go. Travis will get tired about here. That's how I know I'm on decent pace so far. And he recovers very quickly. You don't actually have to stop running. Although, on a note of running, by the way, running, at least in the Japanese version, I think the controls are slightly different in the American version, uh, is done by holding square and the accept button is circle in the Japanese version. So, this whole time, I am holding the controller like this. It is very comfortable. Because, uh, you cannot do that with your thumb. Your thumb, can you tell... <laughs> can you tell where I'm from? normal world. This door is locked from the inside, but we can sneak our way in via the other world. And we have gained a key. <sighs> Head to the top floor and use this key. Since it is a common question, I will, uh, I will expand on this. A PlayStation TV is basically a Vita with a HDMI out, but no screen. It's like a mini console kind of deal. It's actually pretty common for speedrunning PSP games because it's a good way of getting HDMI out off a PSP. But uh, the device isn't well known to like the general gaming public because it was largely a complete failure. <laughs> There's a katana in this room. I've picked up a katana. The katana is the best weapon in the game. So, uh, this run will feature Johnny America Trucker Man over here, killing the enemy with the power of anime. 
I'm glad you enjoy the Johnny American thing. I do. It's it's like one of my favorite bits of yours. It's a fun bit. Johnny America saves Japan. I don't know why that cracked me up hard. I think it's because in Siren Blood Curse, Howard speaks Japanese about as well as I do, and I find that relatable. Yeah, that sounds right. I always call <laughs> Siren Blood Curse the, uh, the, what, the Netflix Death Note? It's like, it's true, it is like that. We're talking about a completely different game now. <laughs> the chat is probably good. We're sharing an in joke here. Exactly. Okay, I've traveled to, like, the west wing of the... Honestly, the geography of the, the, the sanitarium doesn't really make any sense to me. I just sort of memorize the direction. I'm on, like, the other side of the building, but this, this, the only, this is the only hallway accessible in the other side of the building. This, this is weird. I don't know. Solve a puzzle. Solve a puzzle, gamer. It's a pill-based puzzle. You gotta give the right patient the right pills. It's described in a file. Ooh, that was clean. The hitboxes for inserting the pills is like super tiny. I made that look really good. Excellent. Please no grab. Thank you. Anytime you get that close to an enemy, you are risking getting like God of War QTE'd. And sometimes the risk is just simply unavoidable. You just you just have to take the risk. It must be done. So again, light stays off. Key, it's key that the light stays off at all opportunities. Like you know, I'm just running past everything, and it seems like I'm being unchallenged by the enemies because the light's off. The detection range of enemies is so low in this game with the light off. That's like the key dividing factor between people who play this game casually is whether or not they realize how simple it becomes to evade enemies with the flashlight off. Because most people are like, damn, this game was really hard, the enemies are so aggressive. I'm just like, did you turn the flashlight off? It doesn't, it doesn't make such a big difference in other Silent Hill games, but it makes a really pronounced difference in this one. It was weird like that. Right, getting the key from that puzzle was basically the last thing we had to do in the sanitarium, which is good. It can be a bit difficult to keep this location straight, as it is a bunch of hallways that largely look the same. We head into the doctor's office. Here's Minor Tech. Cancelling the stand-up animation by unlocking a door. So you don't have to wait for Travis to stand all the way back up before you can start doing things. It just works. It just works. Now we get some nice music. Kiri Yamaoka still worked on this game. His work in this game is also still pretty good. Because right now this is supposed to be sort of like a sad story beat where Travis confronts like a Silent Hill-ish representation of his mother, I believe, who for lack of a better way of putting it, went insane, ended up in a, in a sanitarium after trying to kill him or something like that. I might be mixing up the details a bit. Honestly, I'm kind of fuzzy on this game's plot. It's been a while. We equip our katana. And we become Truckerman. Right, this was the mistake that changed the run. I accidentally picked up this baton, but actually picking up the baton is a good thing. We'll come back to that, because now, here's a boss fight. One strong hit. Two strong hit. Three strong hit. Get hit. Cancel it late by pausing. Don't cancel it early or you'll take a hit again. Another strong hit. Do a weak hit. And then, oh god, I died. That's bad. I think I took two damage and died. That's in. Uh, that's a problem. I wasn't expecting that to happen. 
because I don't have a... Um, I might have to take this run from the top. <laughs> Oh dear. There is no autosave in this game. That's not supposed to happen. That's the very first time I've ever seen that instantly kill me. I... That more or less went to plan, so I'm not sure why that did kill me. I mean, we did start like 15 minutes early. <laughs> well, damn. Uh, nice to know that can happen, I guess. Well, uh, I will say one thing, uh, <laughs> show-wise would be going underneath the usual estimate a little bit, so you're able to go, but we have the classic GDQ moment of that's never happened before. I've, I've never seen it instantly kill me like that. That attack isn't even supposed to make contact, let alone kill you. I should have been able to survive the hit. We'll reset the timer as well. So like, normally you can take the hit and then take the other hit and be on low health but survive, but that just killed me. Straight up, and I'm not sure why. The game is wrong. I don't think that should happen. As far as I'm concerned, that's an incorrect result. I have one fun con from chat, which is you didn't pick up the typewriter. I guess I should pick up the typewriter next time. I honestly banked on that killing me so little, I did not even have a backup save for that. That was possibly foolish of me. Because it's not supposed to. It's just not. I don't, you have to believe me, that's wrong. I don't believe that result. Why did that kill me? Now we get to talk more about why Travis wants to go to the hospital. But I gotta repeat the commentary. Yes. I don't know. I I think I think I I don't I can't even imagine why that happened. I guess the like one of the hits counted twice. That's the only thing I can think of. But I've never seen that happen before at all. You know, if we're doing a revisit of the hospital, I want to complain about Origins because this game is rough. Because why well, you uh, you know even talking about how you're running this on PSTV, right? Yep. So, I don't have access to this game on PS2 myself, meaning every time I've had to run this game, I do it on the PS2 port. Ouch. Yeah, it's terrible. I think you know there's a brightness setting. I don't think it's on the PS2 port. Nope. Actually, no, I lie, it is, but it's New Game Plus only. Yeah, like, why would they lock that to New Game Plus for brightness on PS2? Because... Ow. Also, the I noise was, filter. I was full HP, yeah. I hadn't been hit by anything. The run button. We added the plus 20, uh, 23xx on the, uh, the estimate. It happened again. Why is it doing that? I, I'm overlapping this cutscene with text. That is also illegal. Game is rough. Yeah, it's, <laughs> this game is most certainly rough. I just, it's, it's just, I just, I just died. I'm full health. <laughs> In a way, I'm pretty sure is impossible. It's what these origins really are. Okay, when we get there this time, I'm gonna save the game before the fight, just in case that happens again. A result I've literally never seen before in all of my practice. No, I took- I assure you I took no damage before the boss fight. I'm pretty sure that result's just incorrect. Maybe the game's haunted. I think it, one of the hits just counted twice. Because, I don't know, game sucks. I have no better explanation for you. It, here's the thing. It's also, it's mechanically meant to be impossible to die below uh, flashing red HP. That's the other thing. That's why that took me off guard, because it's like, that breaks the rules of the video game. So, like, when you get hit and you're about to die, the screen starts flashing red. And then if you get hit again, then you die. That didn't happen, it just skipped it and went straight to death. Which is wrong and not how that is supposed to work. 
And I'm 100% confident in declaring the game sucks. So that's not supposed to happen. It's a fair representation of the game. No toaster. Probably double crit. There's no such thing as a crit in this game. This is not an RPG. Wait, so actually, a bit of a sincere question, because half-joking. Do you always grab the typewriter before this, or no? No. Okay. For a second, I thought maybe it was like... Wait. <laughs> the, the typewriter doesn't affect boss Was damage it or anything. No. How far in was I before I got killed? Uh, about 23 minutes. Yikes. Uh, honestly, though, not that bad. Uh, Yikes. Leeway. It's <laughs> Yikes. all good. Yikes. This is why we plan leeway. These things happen. Yikes. How to run a show, so it's no worry. You just add the plus 23 of the estimate, and then you get to say that's never happened before. Yikes! And then chat can reference Kung Fu show that's never happened before as well. Uh, remember to actually equip weapon. There we go. Alright, this time. There we go. No QTE grab this time. No, getting grabbed by QTE dudes doesn't do damage. I was still at full health. You can tell, because the indicator in the bottom left would be green when I go in the menu. I like how chat's trying to, like, theorycraft stuff about this game. I'm willing to bet some of the people theorycraft about why I died they have not played this game. And therefore do not know. Well then, back in the streets. 23 minute repeat, good lord. Well, at least now we know more about Origins. Now I know apparently that can happen. I have like 150 attempts on this game, I've never seen that happen once. I also want to mention for Twitch chat that Punchy literally set the world record like, what, two days ago? Two days ago. Brutal. You learn something new every day. This is the wrong time to be learning! I'm sick of learning! Honestly, Silent Hill games just feel like they're kind of cursed sometimes. Uh, I guess I'm kind of going to general banter since we're catching back up to where we were. Yeah, we're, just, we're yeah. just talking yeah. whatever. Yesterday I was playing Homecoming, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you caught it, but there's this part when I was doing Homecoming. You know the intro, how there's the jump scare of the wheelchair, it falls down the stairs? Yeah. Yeah, it never moved. It just stood at the top of the stairs the whole time. <laughs> and the thing is, even when you're trying to walk past it normally in like a speed run, if you try walking to the left, you can kind of squeeze by it, but always have that little bit of like a body jolt to uh, Alex's character. Uh, if it doesn't move, you literally can't pass it. Oh. <laughs> See, that I can believe about Homecoming. <laughs> Homecoming seems like the kind of game where thing. that'll happen. I'm just like, hey, this that, is a I good run. I just, I, I blame Silent Hill games. I think it, they're, not, they're haunted. All right, you know what we're going to do this time on top of saving the game? We're going to pick up the typewriter this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to work now. Watch, it'll be flawless. I want to see what picking up the typewriter does anyway to the item layout. Like, I was going to not take it and take a note, but now I've decided that for the... I, I need to do it both ways at some point, so for the joke, I'm going to do it the other way this time and take a note and think about it. This is, this is for my benefit as well, this is for research. <laughs> as I'm still, in fact, trying to craft, like, the perfect route for this game, due to accidentally discovering new nonsense in the process of de for this hopper. And discovering new nonsense live! Apparently you can die instantly on the second boss. What a cool discovery we've made today. We made it together. And I am definitely not completely embarrassed about this.
At least I know where to make a backup save if I ever try to pitch this for a mainline event. Exactly. Yeesh. <laughs> Yeesh. You know, better stamina management too, actually. This runs off to a better start. It's okay, same stuff as before. All the energy drinks were spawned in the same place because I picked up the same items, blah blah blah. It's consistent, it works. Alright, can I get... There we go. Accessing the puzzle without picking up the note, requiring a very particular angle to run at. See, now I'm actually demonstrating the stuff I didn't hit the first time. It's, it's a very complete demonstration of Origins. How we were talking about before the stream, how is like if I finish the run faster, I can go to bed earlier. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, well, well. I have to go to bed late because Origins keeps you awake. <laughs> My boss will understand if I'm tired at work tomorrow, right? Right? Just tell him the boss won't hit you. <laughs> health drink. No, I picked up the razor! No, that ruins my plan! Why did it pick up the ray? It picked up the furthest possible object. I'm upset he's spaghetti. That ruins my planning. Now there's an extra item in the mix. That confuses everything. In theory, it shouldn't matter, but, like, what? Maybe it does. I'm not sure. No one is sure. People don't know. I'm still picking up the typewriter. If I haven't come up to my boss that I do speedrunning, I really should. They might actually be interested. No, my boss already knows. They watch GDQ. Like, they, they found out by watching and then, like, seeing me on it, and they were like, what? What run did they catch? Uh, Baba, I think. That's a good run to catch. <laughs> Reset again, third time's the charm. Yeah, 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 we're good for it. We're good, we're good for it, right, Dices? <coughs> I don't know about that one. If one reset, good, but you're saving the game. <laughs> I'm now on a, like quest to get kicked off the hotfix forever by wasting too much time. Man, see you next week. <laughs> well, I know it'd be two weeks, actually. I mean, I'm on the hotfix again in like three days after this, because I'm doing a completely different show. Oh, yeah. So this is just devolving into banter while I like catch the run up to. <laughs> where we or we're still like I think like six minutes away of where it uh where it died off. So we're, we don't really know anything new right now. We're running <laughs> the same set of hallways. He I I know what it is. He's tired from running. It's dark. The camera sucks. A lot of the puzzles have been the same. We're kind of just re catching up. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. Oh, tragic. My man's tired. He ain't the only one. There we go, nice turn.
right, all right. Typewriter. Typewriter. Yeah. There it is. <clears throat> the typewriter will make the crucial difference. I'm not forgetting to save my game. Don't worry, chat. Just I'm I'm waiting for the correct moment to do so. So don't worry about it. I do it before the boss. Now where am I at in this? Go top floor, do archive. Oh yeah, those red triangles, those are the save points, by the way. I wouldn't have bothered pointing this out if not for the occasion. <laughs> There is one conveniently located, like, en route to the boss, just in the stairwell. I had to do, had to do it. Please. Please. And then we cut him off. Alright, get the power of anime again. Armed with the power of anime, will be fuel for the journey. Yeah, I guess I've never actually addressed that. Melee weapons in this game break. Like, if you stab a dude with something enough times, the weapon actually, like, shatters in your hands, but the r we only, like, kill the necessary enemies, naturally, so you never actually encounter this in a run. But we do need two katanas. Because if you try and use the first one to the end of the game, you will definitely break it by the end, so we swap to a fresh katana about halfway through. But otherwise, the only thing Travis needs to take on, like, God himself, is two katanas. Have the key. I'm getting back there. Almost there now. I'm very sorry for all of this. It's all good. I'm actually not sure how many katanas are in the game. I think it's more than two, but I'm not sure where the other ones are. 
Once again, the, the the mandatory katanas just, or at least the ones we use in the run, just happen to be in very convenient places per where the run goes. Like, two katanas is plenty, so and the, we enter rooms that have two katanas. Two, two katanas and a shotgun are the primary boss killing implements of the run. Cam we fantastic. <laughs> do a do a full 360. Make everyone sick. Cancel. Enter. Grab yonder funny symbol. Yeah, notably when you pick up funny symbol there that unlocks the door, it also despawns all the enemies. You no longer have to worry about dodging them on your way back. And now, a revolutionary speed technique. Uh, saving the game. <laughs> this is where I'm making the save. There better be enough space on this, right? There, be, there is exactly one spare save slot. Exactly one. If I if I did not have a spare save slot, I was about to hit the roof. Knowing me, I'd like overwrite my New Game Plus prepared file backs or something. There is a New Game Plus run of this game, but it's like about half the length and doesn't show the whole thing. Should have just pivoted to UFO, actually, now that I think about it. I would have kept things on schedule. <laughs> Too late for that now. Equip funny katana. Use funny symbol. Right, back to boss stuff again. Here we go, pick up the baton. I made that mistake, that changes the item layout, da -de da Do the thing. One strong hit. Two strong hit. Three strong hit. Get hit, but cancel out of it. Four strong hit. And there we go, she dies, I win. Four strong hits and a weak hit, that's it. I, mean, I, only, I didn't even get hit that time. It was the typewriter. It was supposed to be, it was the typewriter, clearly. But, like, it's supposed to be that easy. Like, that attack rarely even makes contact with you, let alone kills you. And now we're back to... Now we're back to... commentary. We're back to gameplay. Now I can pick up where I left off. <laughs> Yikes. Hit the dude four times, and hit him again, and they die. That's it. You gotta hit him with the weak attack on the final hit, because it's slightly quicker. It's that simple. It really is supposed to be that simple. But okay, now we're back outside. I have a typewriter. We're winning. We've made it to new content. But okay, we're gonna use the energy drinks we collected in the sanitarium. To refill our stamina outside. Uh, I explained this at the start, but because I have made a mess of things, I'll explain it again. The reason for the Japanese version of this game is... There is no reason. The Japanese version is not faster for this game, it's just the version I happen to have. Uh, the American version was pulled from the PSN, the American PSN, ages ago, as was the European version, for that matter, uh, leaving the Japanese version as the only one available for purchase. So it was the one I went with, because it was the most convenient way to get it onto my PSTV. There are, as far as I know, no version differences between the Japanese and English versions, obviously, other than the, you know, the presence of Japanese subtitles. That's it. The only thing that differs. Oh yeah, I 
Should have noted, when we left the sanitarium, we picked up a ticket and a key to the lumberyard, so that's where we're headed now, which is back across town, so tired boy Travis is gonna stumble his way over there, eventually. Yeah, it's funny, because I'm, I'm a trendsetter when it comes to regional picks of this game. I, I've noticed that there are, like... I think, I remember that I used to, like, run Silent Hill 3 in Japanese just because I liked the font. And then, I, like, other people started doing it because they thought I was doing it for a reason. And it's like, no, it doesn't make a difference to me why, I just like the font. I'm that, I'm that kind of guy who will, like, run a game in a language because he, quote, likes the font. That's the sort of person I am. Take that as you will. using stamina drinks. This is part of the, the route I came up with two days ago, is using more stamina drinks earlier, because I should get more later if things go to plan, but maybe they won't because I have Razor in my inventory, but also Typewriter. Perhaps the two cancel out to create some sort of reaction. I'm not sure. The Razor may very well be meaningless, it may be meaningful. I have no way of knowing. Other than just experimenting. Yeah, that's normally a health drink. That can be an energy drink with a different item layout, but not this one. Not the one I'm aiming for. So that's on track. I've found no way to get the later energy drinks if that one is also an energy drink. They seem mutually exclusive. But I cannot prove that. As every single time you pick up something, it seems to like cycle layouts. I don't know, it's very strange what's going on with this game's like item distribution. Random weapon pickups affect it, but like picking up first aid kits doesn't seem to do anything. So you can pick up as many first aid kits as you like. This is a spot of RNG. That guy's having a great time in the corner. Are you having a great time? He's having a great time. Look at that butt. See you later. So that guy can just be standing in the way and make a mess of things because you've got to dodge past him and they're very aggressive and hard to shake off correctly. Grab another first aid kit. Again, those don't seem to change the item layout, so they are basically free. You know, insofar as the time they take to pick up, which is not much. And, if at all possible, I would like to not die again. Although I do have backup saves for later game stuff. So it should be less of a tragedy if I do. <laughs> I have some backup saves, just not for that thing. Anyway, the ticket unlocks the door. Very cool. Now we're in the theatre. This cutscene forces the flashlight on. I would prefer it not do that. So we force it back off again immediately. Other Silent Hill games make it so you can't interact with certain items or doors or objects if you don't have the flashlight turned on. This game has no such thing. So you can keep it off as much as you like. Hands hang not on my garments. Moving on. I assume it's a quote from something. I'm not sure what. Do I look like I'm well read in speedrunning Silent Hill Origins? Hey, right, there's like mannequin enemies now, by the way. That's the principal enemy of this area. Grab the sun totem. We need that to solve a puzzle. Key items go in places. Alright, now we're going to pick up our fresh katana. What about second katana? Touching this mirror without touching the note directly in front of the mirror requires you to sort of line that up at a specific diagonal. But I hit it, so cool. Avoid getting near the mannequin dudes. They can also start fairly lengthy QTEs if you get within, like, fitting distance of them, so don't. Out this guy's butt. Go left, but then go right instead. Made him into turning around the wrong direction, so he never actually sees you. 
thus he never charges you. And this is where we'll find out if picking up the typewriter actually changed the item layer in a way that's beneficial or not. Is there an energy drink in the stairwell? No, it's blank. Hmm. Was it because I picked up Razor or not? Hmm. Does that matter? Hmm. Hmm. Questions. All right, actually, ignoring that for a moment, here's a glitch. We insert the sun totem, and we, there's still a missing piece of that puzzle, right? We need the moon totem to complete that puzzle. So we'll leave the room, but actually, no, 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 no. We're gonna go straight back in. You know, I don't know, but why not? Oh, the door's open now, I see. Okay, bye. For some reason, if you insert one half of the puzzle and then leave and come back, the puzzle completes itself. Uh. Uh, okay, sure, that worked. I was trying to bait a lunge there, but he didn't go for it, so I just went. See you later. So, by way of skipping that puzzle, by just only putting one piece in, it actually saves, like, a lot of time. Like, a lot more than it looks. It looks like nothing. Oh, I just went through... I just went through a door. But it actually saves, like, 10 minutes. Maybe 15. It's a very long section. And now it's not. And what's funny is that that bug, uh, just going in and then leaving, is so old, I'm not even sure who found it. It's just always been there. Like, the oldest segmented run of this game I could find dated, like, basically to the game's release year uh, on Speed Demo's archive. It just has the glitch in it. Like, it's been known forever. Okay, now we will do a puzzle. Only like half a puzzle, really, because I already know the solution. You gotta put the right wattage bulb in the right light words. But I don't, you know, it's like a math problem. It's presented to you in the form of a math problem, which ah, uh, love to do math problems in the middle of my horror games. With that, turning on the lights, we have accomplished the main puzzle of the theatre, but we're not quite done yet. So if I had manipulated the item layout successfully, there would be three extra energy drinks lying about the theatre for me to take, and I would use them later. Uh, as it has not transpired, since apparently the combination of Razor Typewriter and Baton is the wrong number of things to make that work, I will instead have to move slowly when it... It's not really a big deal. But it is time. And something I've been trying to figure out is how to make that work, and I'm still not sure. The old route just didn't have those three energy drinks in it at all, because they didn't spawn on the old item route, but something I did is started to make it work. But it turns out, typewriter might not be the way. Or maybe it's Razor. More experimentation needed later. At the very least, the typewriter prevented a 100 to 0 hit. It prevented the death, so... The typewriter is good for that and that alone. Get a key. Be not a fear. The aisle is full of noises. Tell the owl to keep it down. But yes, the puzzle here is that we're setting up the stage with props, such as that the mirror to the other world changes location. Pretty cool puzzle, actually. I'm a fan. And it's visually interesting. Watch that guy by moving left. People ask me how I avoid this, and the answer is just that if you go right around that guy, you will never ever get grabbed by him. I don't know why. It just works. Going left doesn't work, going right does. 
get no energy drink here either, but there is shotgun ammo, so at least there's that. Please don't hit me. Thank you. You've collected the lever for the one broken, like, prop control thing that doesn't have a lever. Don't mind that guy. Camera. Questionable. Alright, I am so unbelievably terrified of dying, I'm going to I'm going to heal in advance of this fight. Don't examine the medkit. Heal using it, you fool. In theory, I shouldn't even get hit during this fight, and if I get hit, it shouldn't kill me, but I'm taking no chances with this. Because yes, another boss will take place here. This boss has a relatively simple technique. We're just going to try and get behind him. One strong hit. I think that made contact. Two. He's going to hit me. Three hits. Nope, dodged around. Excellent. Four. Five strong hits, and then one weak hit will finish. Got him. Excellent. Perfect fight. But then I quickly pull out the gun and reload it, so I don't have to waste time doing that later. Perfect fight. Excellent. That's how it should be going. It should be making me look good. <laughs> hey, a quick question about Origins. Uh, for the leaderboard, is it IGT or RTA? It's IGT. And having de this game, I remember why it's like that. Because this game's load time sometimes hitch for about 15 seconds for no reason. <clears throat> Trippy. Just a complete random. And then as well, just for clarification for anyone who may be unaware, IGT usually refers to an in-game timer where it's, hey, the loads don't actually count. RTA is like, what, real-time attack? Yes. And uh, that's like including just, hey, beat the game, and doesn't really put a limitation on anything. RTA, or time attack, is a term that derives from French motorsports, I think. Really? Fun, fun? Yeah, really. I did not make that up. That, see, now that I've said that, it sounds like I did. I assure you, though, I'm genuinely telling the truth about that. I thought it came from Japanese video games, but no, apparently it's a French motorsport term. Honestly, I thought it like came from, like, Tekken. Because uh, a lot of the fighting games... I don't know why, like, for you don't see a lot of fighting game speedruns, but a lot of them had time attack modes natively in them. It's true. For some reason, inputting the combination of the guy's apartment number into this cash register causes it to pop out with the key. I don't really understand the logic of that one. You, you just, you're just supposed to do that. Like, you pick up a letter that says, oh, you know, the apartment number is this, and you think, do I put it into a cash register? And you do, and it works. Okay. I don't know. It's, it's not like a very complicated puzzle. It's like, there's a number, and the only thing you can put a number into is in the room. It's just... Why would a cash register do that? <laughs> ah, it's moving. Sadly, I cannot use stamina drink to speed up my slow jogging there. And in the interest of absolute safety, grab this ampule an item that restores you to full health no matter what, and in fact actually slowly regenerates some of your health over time, too. Normally I wouldn't pick that up, but... Marathon strats. Not marathon enough, but marathon strats. Another health drink, a uh, stamina drink rather. That one spawn seems to be immutable. It never changes no matter what you do. And I get the dodge on this guy's butt. Oh, baited. Easy. Actually, not easy. You have to time that very specifically. But we got it, and that's the important thing.
Okay, and now we make it to the game's final area. Uh, if that seems incongruous with where the timer is currently at, it's because it's quite big. The motel. The motel is large. And it kind of bleeds into a different area of the game. Anyway, get a room key. That's where we'll start. We need to get a room. And now we engage in nonsense RNG as we're going to run past enemies and just hope they don't grab me. Back, one out of two. And two out of two, two out of two. Come on, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Huh? Huh? Oh, no whammy. Excellent. Both of those guys, or none of those guys, or one of those guys can grab you and start a QTE. You just lose time if that happens. There's nothing you can do about that. Although, someone was telling me the other day about how the game itself says that you can only be grabbed if you have low stamina. I'm pretty sure that's not true. <laughs> it's like in the game's tip section, but I'm pretty sure that's just not true. Because it happens even if you have infinite stamina turned on. So my headcanon is that Travis always has low stamina. That would track. The, the stated, like, canon reason, although I forget what the source for this is, for Travis's, like, phenomenally poor cardio is that he's asthmatic. But I forget if that comes up in the game or if it's in, like, the manual or something. Faded, see you later. Y you know, I'm not a doctor, but I feel like an asthmatic man chugging how many energy drinks is probably worse for him than jogging. <laughs> Anywhere from 10 to 13, depending on how many... 10 to 13! <laughs> Like, your heart would just stop at that point, right? Probably. I don't want to try it, and I don't recommend anyone here trying that. But on the other hand, if you do it, you can go really fast. No, that I'm not a medical generate your stamina. <laughs> I am not a medical professional. Do not take advice from me. Get this key for the office. Yes, we're going to take that key and it will allow us to fight the first boss of the motel. This, this area has two bosses, as you can tell it's a long one. And the, the boss we're going to fight is Pyramid Ben. That's what I call him. He's not quite Pyramid Head, but he's darn close, so Pyramid Ben he is. Alright, here's some more RNG nonsense. I don't know what to call these guys, but we can once again get RNG grabbed here if we're unlucky. Nope, lucky. Right, and now, question about the item layout. Did it spawn an energy drink on the corner here? No, also blank. It can be on top of that air conditioning unit. Interesting. Hmm. Taking a mental note of that, mapping it away, storing it for later. Research is occurring live. Okay, so like, typewriter and razor. Let's just write out that. Right out, it's no good. Maybe it'll spawn off the Pyramid Ben. There was one I kept missing. Do I get RNG'd? Oh, RNG grabbed. A pity, a pity. This can happen. Nothing to be done for it. Simply random. Simply a point of the good old RNG, as it is so often claimed. Alright, now we're gonna fight Pyramid Ben. We're gonna do this by taking the pole that he keeps in the room. Equip this pole, and then we're gonna charge it. You can charge attacks in this game, and it makes the screen shake, which is very fun. Cancel out of getting hit. Hit the pause, so we can stab him again. Cancel out of getting hit. I'm going to heal again, because I'm that terrified of this. Another hit will kill him, and that's Pyramid Ben killed. Excellent. He's down! Down with Pyramid Ben! No energy drink in the corner either. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that spawned before in a different layout. Interesting, interesting. Right, second half of the motel. I'm going to be asked a very important question. Have some money. No. Cannot have money. My money. Now that we have acquired money, I can finally do my laundry. But 
I'm going to do the laundry at warp speed. Oh, long load. There it is. It hitched. Excellent. Anyway, I'm going to do my laundry finally. Except I'm not, because apparently the game thinks I'm not standing in the right place. Shush. Do it properly. Thank you. Check out this cycle. Fastest spin cycle ever. I now have clean underwear and this key. What are you tired for, Travis? He just did his laundry really fast. He's just tired. Get a real problem, Travis. Okay, we use that key to go in here. In this cutscene, we see Lisa and Kaufman on a bed. Uh, they're characters from the first game, but Lisa seems to have aged backwards, because this is supposed to take place before Silent Hill 1, but she looks significantly older in this game. It's very weird. This is what I mean when I say, like, as a prequel, it seems to forget when it is. We have now drained the pool and can acquire a glass heart for our troubles. Well, it's more like the hell world has drained the pool for us. I like that, like, two frames worth of camera change there, because if you're not ready for it, it will completely flip your movement and you will lose time. I'm ready for it doing that, because I'm used to it being there, but it's really silly that that can happen. Pointing out the subtle detail of that. I have to think about this stuff, and now so do you. I don't mind this fool. I'm going to stab a door. Using an ornamental dagger. I think that's what it's called in English, anyway. Oop. Another hole. And another safety medkit. Again, medkits are immutable. They always spawn regardless of the current, like, item layout. The medkits are always safe to collect. And there's quite a few to collect. And now we've ended up back outside the sort of workshop room where we were before, but now we have a glass heart that we can crush in a vice. Yeah, there's the boss of the theatre now, just back as a regular enemy, by the way. Hello. Crush this... no, camera... oh boy, camera. Now we're gonna crush this thing in a vice. But I'm gonna... Moving on. Now we have the ring. The ring is the goal item of the sequence. Normally there's a puzzle that needs to be solved, but even if you input the puzzle, like you know the solution in advance, you can't move on without the ring. The game, like, the ring is simply there to check that you've actually finished the level. <laughs> right, you can get RNG wrapped again here. Nope, no dice. Bucks to be you, bye. going to solve this puzzle, it requires a date. It's the date of a character's wedding. I think it's a character I've not actually bothered talking about, so I'm not going to explain that. Law stuff. As it is, in fact, a wedding ring that we put in. Yes, if you don't put in the wedding ring, you cannot get the key, which just sort of pops out onto the keyboard 
Like the board of keys? I don't even know what you call that. A keyboard is a different thing entirely. Key holder? Key holster? There we go. I've arrived at the correct word. That thing. The key just appears there when you put the ring in. Now now we're gonna go fight Travis's dad with a gun. <sighs> with a gun, fire gun. And we can reload from the menu because it's faster. Than not doing that. I'm not sure any of those shots actually made contact. Because they made a different sound effect than what I'm used to, but it's hard to tell with this boss fight. Now, the main thing you want with this boss fight is just for him to not summon his, like, funny tentacle attack at you. As that's generally inconvenient. There it is. There's the funny tentacle attack. That's inconvenient. Oh, and I got a hit. That's unspicy. Dude, those hits are not connecting. This is a tragedy. I really hope he's dead. Okay, he is. Now equip the fresh katana. I ran out of ammo there, so if he didn't die after that, I would have had to suddenly improvise and things would have gotten really messy. <laughs> well, you'd that have like the typewriter. The... I would have the typewriter. I could kill him with it. <laughs> Travis, please pick up the medkit. Fussy baby. Fussy baby. Right, solve a puzzle. Kind of. I simply do this by memorizing inputs, because the actual nature of this puzzle is like... Huh? Like, match the symbols, but like, kind of? Oh, that's never happened before moment. Nah, see, like, okay, shots not entirely working properly on that boss is something I have seen happen before, but generally I budget enough ammo for the variants. Because sometimes you can just shoot at the boss, and your hits just don't make contact, reason, origins. I, I don't know, sometimes you just shoot and it doesn't hit. That's why I, there's, like, surplus ammo baked into the route, because you cannot rely on every shot to actually make contact. I do not like the way this guy is moving. I'm going to wait for him to... <laughs> I'm going to wait for him to go? That's not something I usually have to deal with. This is also not something I have to deal with. It's the stamina. The stamina management is off, making things rougher. But it is okay, I know how to handle this, roughly. It'll be fine. I like how those enemies kind of scoot around like dogs with itchy necks. You know how like when they just sort of drag themselves around with nothing but their hind legs? That's what they look like. That guy's probably gonna QTE grab me. No. That's a thing that can happen when you get really deep into that. Okay, and that's the nowhere run. It's like the other world. It's not really a level unto itself, but it is what it is. And now, crawling. How are we all doing tonight? 
<laughs> this is just we holding. Good. This is just holding left on the analog stick for a hot minute. It's the most intense speed tech in the game. My man crawling. Hilariously, if you hold left while skipping the cutscene, the instant you skip cutscene, Travis will crawl the wrong way and go back out the hole. You can't do it too quickly, or he'll crawl in the wrong direction. Because despite the fact that he's crawling in one direction, the controls are still camera relative. So if you start doing it too quickly, it will buffer the wrong direction in. Transcendental movement technique. Alright, again, out of sheer cowardice, I'm healing before we enter the final boss fight. I'm going to destroy the devil with the power of anime. Right, so this guy's random, he can do one of three attacks. Uh, that claw is not the good one, <laughs> for lack of a better way to put it. I would prefer he not do that. Uh, chest laser beam is adequate, I can deal with that, we can dodge around. What is he doing? He has smacked me again, thus wounding me greatly. You can cancel out of attacks, as I've been doing by pausing so I can sneak in more counter hits. He's being a very reactive gamer right now. Uh, this is the move you see most commonly. He summons a cloud of meteors, and he died before I got to show what that actually does, so never mind. He died. <laughs> time, 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 run over. GG. Alright, uh, what, you got a 3928? 3928. What's my PB again? I mean, uh, it's like 38 something mid. That run was alright in the end. Turned out okay. It worked <laughs> out. <laughs> me a couple tries to get there, but we did crucially get there. And that's yeah, Silent Hill Origins. That's Silent Hill Origins. It's a game of scams. <laughs> like how oh, I didn't even right. get to show you the main thing you usually have to deal with during that boss fight, because it didn't even happen. <laughs> like, it's random, it's random, it's random. That's what you gotta do. Oh, here's, there's a bunch of statistics as well, like playtime is the big number, naturally, so it's 39.28. The number below that is the amount of time I spent with the flashlight on. So not even two minutes. And then it's uh, accuracy at close range, which is 100, meaning I didn't whiff a melee hit at all. Check out all my achievements. Uh, they're for various things, like completing the game quickly, clearing with mostly melee kills, clearing the game at all, clearing without looking at the map. In fact, I never picked up the map, so I was going to get it by default. Etc, etc. But yes. That's Silent Hill Origins. Uh, that was a bit of a mess, but thank you very much it for being all patient with out. me. Uh, uh, well, you have any uh, shouts you want to give? Plug yourself, all that jazz. Uh, I do actually have a shout out. It's kind of a weird one, but I'm going to go for it anyway. Uh, I would like to give a shout out to the late Zorky for this speed run. Uh, a long time ago, like years ago in the Silent Hill community, Zorky was the only person who really ran this game. Uh, he was the Origins guy as it were. Uh, he was far ahead of the curve when it came to like understanding the game and its mechanics and what have you. He sort of like laid the initial foundation. Zorky sadly passed away a few years back, and as weird as this is, I sort of... I engaged in a sort of bizarre grieving process over it, and part of it was learning this run. Because, like, when he passed away, nobody knew what the hell they were doing with this game anymore. The guy who knew the most was gone. So I was like, oh, well, I guess someone has to do it. So I, I took that up. I took that up. So thank you. Thank you very much, Sorky. You were one of the real ones. Big cheers to that. I was off. Anyone wanted to find you on uh, anywhere, can they find you? Yes, you can find me at Twitch TV slash Punchy. I hope to see you there. You can also find me on Twitter at succinct underscore Punchy if you wish to follow me for my inane ramblings. Well, yes, that right. is Silent Hill Origins. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for Origins. And uh, right now, we still have more fun games coming your way. We have a couple more, so I hope that you will enjoy those. For now, though, while we set those up, we're going to be right back very quick. This is a blood clot break. Don't die of blood clots. Walk around, touch your toes, get a snack. Do what you uh, generally need to do, because we're going to be right back very quick. However, before you go, uh, you can check out at Games Done Quick on Instagram to get bite-sized clips from our Hopic shows and see what happens at events. All right, we'll be right back. All right, everyone, we are back from the break. Welcome back to the show. I hope you enjoy that run of Silent Hill Origins. Uh, like we say here, things don't always go according to plan, but it was a great run nonetheless, and I thought it was pretty fun to watch in general, so I hope that you enjoyed that run. 
Uh, continuing on to hit horror franchises with interesting prequels, uh, after the releases of a few RE games, they kind of decided, what happened before Resident Evil 1? And uh, I, I guess I like how the games always do this. So our next run is going to be Resident Evil Zero, which is a prequel to, well, obviously, the first game, and that will be ran by Felmore. So take it away. Uh, yep, and this is, as you said, Resident Evil Zero. This... I actually, a lot of people don't like this game. I think it's pretty good. But uh, that said, as a speed run, this is another run with no autosaves, and it's also a run that can easily blow up. So, had I started 23 minutes earlier, I would have felt good about this, but no, I don't. <laughs> but uh, that said, let's get going. So, three, two, one. Resident Evil. And go. Yeah. This game, this run starts out with a lot of shooting. There's a conductor that has to die, otherwise he stalks you around the train. As you can see with the train, there's not a lot of maneuverability here. This guy in the blue, he will follow you and do cutscenes if you don't kill him. Now, he's not actually dead yet, but I'll have a second chance. I'm going to pick up a key, and Rebecca's going to meet Billy. And I'm going to take a step back and try to kill these dogs. Okay. If you don't kill those dogs, there will be a menace, because you're in a tiny hallway. So I always have to ask the Resident Evil games, are dogs free? Oh, hell no. You have to some kill aren't, them. <laughs> some aren't. And this one, you this, there's a lot of shooting. If you're used to Resident Evil speedruns, you don't see much shooting. This one has a lot. Okay, and now we're about to get control of Billy. And that's what makes this run interesting, is you're going to see two characters running in two different directions. You know, set up, basically teleporting. And you'll be controlling one character off screen quite frequently. Also, this scene still looks amazing. So Rebecca is going to fix a wire and grab a key, and she's going to be stuck up here for a while, and Billy's going to do a lot of running around the train, hopefully not getting eaten. He probably will get eaten, but we'll see. So what do you mean, get eaten? Uh, there's a lot of zombies on the train. And there's not really much room. And that would, uh, that would track. Yeah, so I'm going to switch to Billy. I'm going to equip his knife. The knife allows you to dodge by taking a step back whenever you aim. And Billy should be on the stairs already, and he is. Now Billy needs to get this key. Now Billy is faster than Rebecca, so a lot of the run is Billy. Billy also has more HP than Rebecca. So this game this run would be really hard if Rebecca was faster. And here we go. You can run between their arms or their body and their hands, like right through their arms. Sometimes. Okay, that's bad. Not that bad really, I mean. What the hell? Okay. Nice dodge on the second one. Or the I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that was awkward. Sometimes I pick up that map on accident. So we're coming up on what I guess would be the first boss. It's a scorpion. No one knows how it got on the roof of the train. We're going to attempt to skip the scorpion. And hopefully we get that. Otherwise, it's going to turn into a run like the last one, probably. So we're going to drop the FPS. I'm going to aim at the scorpion to get him to lunge, and I'm going to try to pick up the bullets in the right spot. That should be fine. 
And with the low FPS, you clip through the scorpion. And then you want to put the FPS back up. It's actually very similar to, I guess, Resident Evil Village in a way. You do a lot of uh, lowering FPS to clip through enemies in that run. You only do it once here. Nice Takes a long... skip. Yeah. And it's kind of, that's another unique thing about this. Like none of the other uh, classics really have anything like that. I would, I don't think that I'm aware of. This is kind of the last classic Resident Evil too. It's like the end of an era. Now, Billy has skip found. If you don't want me asking really quick, I think it might have been found on the GameCube. There's the knife dodge. You just aim with it. You take a step back instantly. Okay. Now we're gonna send up the uh, thingy ice pick to Rebecca. And then Billy's gonna move over to the vent, and he's gonna wait there. And we're actually going to do some more shooting in a second here. Got to kill more dogs. Dogs are really bad. You basically kill... You kill all the dogs on the train. Those are actually the only dogs in the entire run, too. So Rebecca already has her gun ready, so I'm going to... Ready, Billy's. Hit that. This way. Roger. Call Rebecca so she follows. Rebecca doesn't always want to shoot. I don't really know why. This briefcase needs two rings to open it. That was one of them. And this is the uh, most beloved item in all of Resident Evil right here. The hook shot. It takes up two slots and you got to carry it around the entire game. I've heard a lot about the hookshot, but I really do not know how uh, how devastating it fully gets. I just understand carrying around the entire game with uh, limited inventory sounds pretty rough. Okay, this is the worst car on the uh, whole train, because i got to keep Rebecca safe, and i got to get Billy through here. Luckily, they were just not near Rebecca, so that was kind of easy there, but... So uh, I guess a couple of questions from I'm watching so far. One, I guess it doesn't matter how close your partner is. If you go through a room, they'll follow you. Yes. So that's and then two. Oh, go ahead. So that's a huge part of the speed run. This guy has to die. We don't really know why, but you can't leave the room unless you kill him. All right, so for the, uh, the second one, though, um, I noticed uh, Rebecca was actually just running into the door the whole time. So you can actually control both characters at the same time? Yes. Ooh. I'm going to save the heal, Billy, here. Just a little. Now, Rebecca, this is actually... I positioned Rebecca to try to kill those zombies for me, and she did it, which gives you a free pass down here. And we are almost done with the train. This is a big menu here. We're gonna ditch all our guns. We'll get a new gun later. Yeah. The train has a lot of menuing and a lot of reset points. And this is the Billy Run music. Okay, there's gonna be three zombies. We're gonna, well, in the next car, we're gonna have to try to dodge them all at once. Or sometimes there's a good RNG where you can just run by, but. This is Edward. He's Rebecca's friend. He's dead. This cook is usually nice. That's actually a bad RNG, but... It's alright. 
That's a good dodge. I'm gonna grab that first aid. We're gonna be using it on Billy later. Now Billy has to do some math. And this is RNG. There's three possible numbers you gotta figure out. Well, only a little bit of RNG, I guess. They all take the same amount of time. And that's the end of the train. And here comes the sewer. You guys will love the sewer. That is the end of the sewer. Good level. Great sewer level. Now I'm moving Billy to a door. Hopefully he gets there. I can't see where he's going, but I kind of hear and have a general idea. Rebecca's going to grab this. And then run from some bats or birds, I guess. Follow me. Okay. Follow me. I'm just going to run into this guy. There's a better way to do this, but this is very safe later. For Rebecca. There's a funny dodge here. Next dodge here is pretty rough. Okay, we didn't get it, but hopefully they fall down. Or this is a disaster. Hey, okay, Rebecca got him down, but you don't want Rebecca to get bit because Rebecca is always... Basically, Rebecca is going to be in caution in two bites, and Rebecca is slower than she normally is in caution. Well, Billy doesn't lose any speed when he's in caution, and he's already faster. So now I'm going to ditch this knife finally, do some more menuing. We're going to send Rebecca up. I'm going to go, I'm going to safety heal Rebecca. Like, I'm going to play this pretty safe because, like I said, there's no auto saves, and I have a few safety saves, but they're not everywhere. Because you can only save at typewriters. Zombie RNG is a little weird too. Like, where they were when you left a room impacts where they are when you come back to a room. Which is why I ran into a zombie earlier on purpose. Um, so, let's see that. Yeah. I, uh, I do have one question since we're now in more of a mansion area of the game. Um, yeah. So I imagine you're familiar with the Resident Evil 1 remakes we one, right? Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people here probably are as well. If you're a fan of horror games, you it's a pretty popular speed game. Um, so how much tech is shared between the two games? Because this very looks very similar. I imagine it's probably a similar engine. I know uh, that game has stair skating. I know it's, it's not happening here, but I'm wondering if anything is shared between the two games. Uh, there's no stair skating. I guess zombie dodging is kind of similar, but... Uh... They, it takes you have to wait longer after you dodge a zombie in this one. But you also seem to be able to run through their arms if they're sideways. Okay. Time for the uh, centipede. Ah, Billy! Billy, three steps. Get this thing. Shoot all six of these rounds. Listen to Rebecca scream a lot. Shoot a shotgun shell. And then hopefully I can finish him with the other six that are loaded. We'll see. If he moves immediately, that's a bad RNG. I might get him anyway. I'm not going to get him. Got 18 now. It's all right. Now I'm going to switch to Rebecca. So sometimes he'll like pause and he'll throw Rebecca on the ground and give you all kinds of time to kill him. And sometimes he just runs away. So Rebecca's gonna go down. Billy's gonna stay up. You stay here. Okay. I'm gonna order him to stay so he doesn't teleport. Now this should be free because I ran into that. It's not free. Why is it not free? 
The zombie cheated. So I had to dodge. He him. knew. He knew. Why did he know? The lighter fluid. Billy starts with a lighter, but it's empty. That usually works out. Follow me. Yeah. Follow me. Now for some more shooting. We gotta kill the three zombies in this hallway. Pop. 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 The shotgun range is very specific if you want a headshot, but it does always work. I just went the wrong way because I'm... I did that earlier in the run. <laughs> I'm supposed to go over here and grab this. Get Billy his lighter fluid, light the candle. There's gonna be two zombies in here. But you're gonna see, like, you just run through the arms of one of them. It's really weird. See? Like, yeah. if you run between their hands and their body, they won't grab you. I don't think that works in Remake. No, I don't think it does either. But at the same time, like, when a zombie misses you, you have to wait for his shoulders to, like, slump back down. Like, he has to come to complete rest, or he'll just magnet grab you if you try to run by too early. But you're gonna, in the mansion, you see a lot of this splitting up stuff with the two characters. Like, now I gotta run Rebecca to the door while Billy does this. And then I gotta keep Rebecca at the door. But you don't want to tell her to stop, because that takes two seconds. So I just gotta move her blind and hope I don't put her somewhere weird. The clock piece from Mr. Moose. And that'll teleport him off the table. I mean, it, it, as long as they're ordered to follow, they will teleport. I'll go alone. Okay. Now we need Rebecca to stay here because look how big this room is. So when we come back here, it's just going to be an instant teleport all the way back down. What's amazing about this game is how little you need. Like when people play this for the first time, it's kind of... I mean, some people don't even finish it. You run out of resources. It's the hardest Resident Evil probably. And it, it kind of requires you to come up with some strategies more than other Resident Evils, which is actually why I like it a lot. Like one thing I'll see a lot of people do is keep two pistols and keep pistol bullets on both characters. I mean, that's just a waste, you know? You could free up two inventory slots by just putting all the pistol ammo on one person and dropping a pistol. And with the game, you only have 12 slots. And there's no item box. So you, you can throw stuff on the ground, but this way. Roger. It's not as convenient as the uh, item box. Okay, this is a really tricky room coming up. We gotta pick up a key card and we gotta get out. There's like eight zombies in here. We gotta keep Rebecca on the door, which I did. You just teleport right out. But it's not like you can order Rebecca to stop. Alone. So if you don't, if I'm not moving Rebecca myself, she'll just follow Billy. Because she hasn't been ordered to stop. This is a key for a puzzle that's coming up. As well as a, what looks like a zip disk. I don't know. If, I guess a... I don't know. One of those old medias that went away. Let's regroup. Roger. Teleport up. I'll go alone. Roger. He calls him Roger a lot. I, I, I guess she gets confused. She tries her best. 
2D. This puzzle is actually RNG. 2D is the worst of the RNGs. It's only like two seconds worse. Just kind of depends where they're going to be, where Billy's going to be standing. Billy will be standing closer to where he needs to go if you get the other RNG. Now I'm sending Billy around and Rebecca to the other door. Hopefully she's there. I really don't know. Get to see how smart Billy is now. Not only did he do math earlier, now he's playing chess. That's like on two pieces. Yeah, it's a really odd position that would never happen. Well, that's why he's a grandmaster, right? Yeah, he solved the puzzle. And I missed the book. Pick up the book, Billy. This book is evil. You can tell by the cover. You need these oh, flame rounds? Uh, as a tech question as well, because I, I know the pistols are mentioned and stuff, uh, I know a lot of Resident Evil game speedruns, they tend to feature a uh, quick fire uh, trick. Group. Does this game have that at all or no? No quick fire, no stair oh. skating, which is great. No stair skating, no trick fire. Although I did like the scorpion skip. I did like that skip a lot. I, it's the score. Yeah, like stair skating is just carpal tunnel. The quick shooting is just. It's like the timing on that is ridiculous in remake. Uh, mechanically, the real mechanics of this is the two characters and dealing with them. Somehow so, I am not standing in front of this anymore. When also dealing with it, uh, how hard was this game to learn? Because I know a lot of Resident Evil games, especially, you can't really save the game because they want you to do it in one go because then you'll be messing with the uh, in-game timer. And I guess you, you, in theory you can make practice saves, but in general I think learning Resident Evil games tends to have a bit of a... Uh, there's kind of a higher floor, especially with this game being as difficult as it is. You have to train your brain to run two characters in two different directions at the same time. That's the hard part. And there's a lot to remember, too. So, like, last year I ran this, you know? Right. Like, I, 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 that was after probably like 300 hours. I could not autopilot. I had to pretty, fo pretty much focus. At this point, I can pretty much autopilot it. I mean, unfortunately, when I was de resting, I did not get record, unlike Punchy, but. You know, I did get record twice in the past year. And maybe it comes again. No, it's not going to be this run. We're already a minute behind. Well, not not this run, <laughs> but in general. <laughs> yeah. And maybe. We'll see. But I got to run Martian Gothic. True. I also put a special uh, video game case above me. Like a new also, I know uh, I saw a few comments in chat talking about your Gaiden shirt. Oh, yeah. Definitely oh, part Gaiden. of Team Gaiden. It's better than RE4, really. You know, I liked Gaiden until I hit the point where it deleted my save file in front of me. That could have been the emulator's fault, though, right? I think it was. Uh, I played it uh, on MU on my end, and then I just had my save file deleted. It's like, wow, uh, there goes a good, like, five hours of my life. Uh, also, the music in this part is awesome. It's nice. This is the Billy Run music part two. Here's the monkeys. Everybody loves the monkeys. One of the most favorite enemies in all of Resident Evil history. Uh. That and the hookshot, which isn't even an enemy, but it's still one of the favorites. In a way, it's an enemy. Okay, there's two spiders here. The second one I'm going to try to get to slam into the wall. There he goes. That's going to make things free on the way back. Well, unless he behaves like that zombie earlier that I said would be free. More splitting up. I got to like... Like, you, in, when you're playing casually, you're going to order one of them to stop moving. But every time you do that, they, like, pause. Takes, like, two seconds. Oh! I lost Rebecca. Hey. No, Billy, why? Oh, Billy. Why did you do that? Uh, 
you lose one character, you're going to lose the other one. There. I put him in a better spot now. Okay, this is the first hunter pair. Every hunter pair can get you in this run. There's four hunter pairs. They can all get you. This one just seems random, though. Like, sometimes he swipes and hits you, and sometimes he misses. We use one flame round, and then we want to use... Oh, God. Okay, I s screwed up and wasted an acid round, which means I now have to kill two monkeys with one acid round. This should be fine, right? This way. Okay. Exactly. I'm gonna run Rebecca into the wall. And the spider will be far enough away he doesn't get... Uh, he doesn't notice Rebecca. Did it? Good. So, you need that, you want three acid rounds for that, because you don't want to use flame rounds on a monkey, because you need, you need them all. Well, you can get away with it. You can finish the run without all of them, but to do the run properly, you want all the flame rounds. This is actually a really cool puzzle here. It's like a food chain puzzle. I like it. Of course, you have to kill all three monkeys, because otherwise... Like, Rebecca has to stay in this room, so... I mean, shit, like, it would lose a lot of time trying to put her somewhere else. Come on. Roger. Still thinks he's Roger. Okay, there's a nasty room coming up. Can Billy dodge five zombies while Rebecca does not get bit? Let's see. Yes. Oh god, Rebecca. The analogs can be finicky. Like with the camera changes, which, you know, people are probably used to that in all of these kind of games. Whether it's Haunting Ground or RE1 or any of them, really. Right. When you change camera angle, like in some of the lines that can be really bad if it happens. And it seems to happen more in this game than it does in Remake. Also, these are the Leechmen. They have crazy flute music. Billy can also play piano. Billy's amazing. Does math, he plays piano. Does chess. Somehow removing this battery closes the door that we opened with the piano. But then playing the piano again will open the door again even though the battery is gone. Come on. Okay. Fun little dodge. Oh, Billy, no. Got hit. Okay, we gotta give Billy the battery. I'll go alone. Okay. Billy needs to go alone. And a lot of this, the movement in this game is really about teleporting using the two characters to essentially teleport across every room. Right. Now we got a long box pushing segment. Not the longest box pushing segment in the game, but a pretty long one here. Has anyone commented on that Vita game box behind me yet, or is it too small to see? 
Is it Book of Memories? Yeah. <laughs> I can see it from the, the tiny window that I can see from the, uh, the GDQ screen. <laughs> oh, God, not Book of Memories. You know what the I sad part is? What? That game could be really polished if uh, someone put the work into it. It just is like, it's a Diablo clone with, like, no mechanics, you know? Well, it's weird because I, I don't want to make this Book of Memories talk instead of or a zero talk. It just, I I don't have a lot to talk about Book of Memories because it doesn't come up very often for speed tech. But, like, you can stat upgrade in particular ways. There's ways to solve every puzzle, so even the RNG stuff has that. Uh, buying certain downloadable on, characters right. can technically improve the route, I think. <laughs> Jesus. It, it's weird. There's Pay a lot to of win. quantities. Pay to win speedrun. Yeah, apparently even picking your class is super important because some characters just mesh well with the stats that are better for speedrunning because there's one that's like, oh, if you level this stat, you physically run faster. But also certain characters do more damage with that stat. It's dumb. It's really dumb is what I'm saying. We are now coming up upon what is universally the most agreed upon best boss of Resident Evil, I think. The Bat. basically a flying enemy, even though we have fixed camera. And if you do some damage to it, suddenly little bats will be flying around with it, which will block your shots. So you really have to, in the speed run, you got to stun lock him and kill him with five flame rounds before he gets away. This could kill the run, but I do have a save here because it's, you know. I, I, I'd say I get this, like, 50% or something. We'll see. If I do fail, I do have, have the characters in different costumes on my save, though. Well, that's neat. More flame rounds. I always love that you can load a grenade launcher with unlimited rounds in the Resident Evil. I had to adjust my aim, got a little lucky, but as soon as, if he flies away, there's going to be little bats everywhere and I'm not killing him, unless I get really lucky. And as you can see, we had to use the hook shot again right after the bat, so you have to like have the inventory very specific. And the thing about the hook shot, not only does it take two slots, on your first playthrough, you're not, you're not going to know when you're done with it. Like, I know when I'm done with it, because I've played the this game, one? but... Okay. You gotta carry that thing the entire game on your first playthrough, because you have no idea when it's when it's done. Okay, I'm going to do this, and we are Rebecca is the one who needs to go up here. And even on a casual playthrough, if Rebecca is not who you send up here, it can make your playthrough way longer. Because Rebecca is the one who can mix chemicals. Um, and everything she needs is up here to basically get this thing out of this vial here. But if she's down below, one of the things she needs is back in the mansion. And if you didn't happen to get it before you came here, you're going to be looking around for it for a while. Go grab some shoddy shells. This is one of the chemicals, the red one. Try to run by a zombie here. Good. Here's the other chemical. Gonna run by the zombie again. I'm gonna equip the shotgun and do the chemical stuff. And Rebecca's gonna fight the zombie for us. And hopefully she has seven shotgun shells left when we're done. Otherwise, I'll have to get more later. So we're going to let the AI... Rebecca's AI is going to take care of these two zombies instead of us, because then we don't have to waste time on it ourselves. Now I'm going to swap over to Billy, and she should be fine. I actually got Billy in the perfect spot here, because you have to move him here blind. If 
by the Leech Man. This crazy flute music. I think I like this run more than remakes, though, because I feel like there's something in every room. You know? Like, remake gets kind of, feels kind of slow for a speed run, you know? Even though... Like, they're about the same length, but, like, it just doesn't seem like much is happening in re Remake. I kind of well, see what you're talking about, in terms of uh, enemy variety, especially. And dodges, and even fighting some of the enemies. Yeah, you get a lot more of the, uh, the stair skating, though. <laughs> yeah, that's what everyone likes. It is nice, though, and I will defend it because um, with the door skip mod category, you're able to rebind the button used for that. So a lot of runners will put on the right analog stick so you don't have to, you know, destroy your hand by the age of, uh, I don't know, 30. Yeah. I mean, it's still not fun, I don't think. Like, but uh, it is better. Yeah. Okay, so she has five shotgun cells, which means I need more. If she has seven, that's perfect. But five, Billy's going to have to pick some up in the box room later. I'm gonna quick turn here to, so I don't screw up the lines and get grabbed. My foot grabbed. That zombie on the ground that's turning his head is funny. Because if he, he grabs you, two other zombies in two other rooms stand up. One of them in the save room, where Billy is. <laughs> so, that's bad. I gotta go get this key. And we're coming up on the second hunter pair. This one is probably the nastiest of the hunter pairs. Because Rebecca's gotta just run through them by herself. Well, Rebecca ends up running through a lot of the hunter pairs. Or two of the hunter pairs by herself. But this one's the harder one. We need the leap there. Grab this. Okay, we got this fast second hunter. So we should be fine. If you get the slow second hunter, you gotta try to like run behind him. I don't know why I opened the menu there. We need Billy needs this dial for a code on the door. There's a note about it. It's actually a pretty decent puzzle, but ends up being 48. Wait. 48. Oh my god, my brain. Uh, I'm sure muscle memory will get it, right? Right. Forty-eight sixty-three. There you go. <laughs> I don't even think I could explain this run, like, if I wasn't actually doing it. Like, I forget what, it, what what happens in the run. Like, if I tried to just say what happens in order without running it. It'd be like describing a bizarre zoo. And we're gonna meet up and we're gonna give Rebecca... ...these... Electronic parts, and she no longer needs the shotgun, but she does need the magnum rounds. Rebecca's got to fight the big guys. We're going to lose Billy for a little bit. These things power the trial or whatever you call this thing, tram. And we're actually going to be heading to the same lab as RE2 original. And down here. Billy was not by the door. Billy fell into the water. Somehow they're going to end up at the same place. Who knows how. The leeches disrupted the thing. Oh, I didn't 
Uh, this is where you can drop the hookshot finally. I just messed up that menu, but that's all right. So now Rebecca basically, yeah, she's only got her magnum rounds now. But luckily, there's a magnum in here. This game, like, the backgrounds in this game are still, like, amazing. And I have it on low, just so it runs slightly better. And it, I have it at 720p. Like, I, I think this is still the best looking Resident Evil game to date. Besides the 3D models, like, background wise, or just, I don't know. Like, I still think this is the best looking Resident Evil game. Grab a key here. This is the third hunter pair. But what about Gaiden? Gaiden? Well, Gaiden's beautiful in its own way. Especially Leon. Like, that's the best exactly. Leon by far, I would say. Like, there's no real argument against that. Let's see. Let's use this key. I could pick up a... There is a first aid in the drawer, just like there is one in RE2 as well. I don't really need it. I mean, I could grab it, but... I'm a professional. Now, you, people who played RE2 Originals should recognize this room. You do come down here... If you're playing Claire, you put uh, Sherry in that little room to the right. But this door, I think, is closed back here, so you don't see this elevator. Now, this is the tyrant. This is the creepiest tyrant, I think. He, like... He... He's kind of like, he's proto-tyrant. He kind of seems defective, like he's shaking and stuff. I mean, obviously, you couldn't really see it there, but... He's kind of more messed up than the tyrant in uh, Remake. You get, like, this feeling like he's kind of defective compared to the other tyrant. Now we're in the lab, but we're, I think we're like, we're under, I guess, RE2's lab. I don't know why there's a lab under the lab. Uh, yeah, I don't, Umbrella made a lot of stuff. In this city. Rebecca will soon be reuniting with Billy. Keep running by stuff. Oh, he even, he's flying. What the hell, zombie? Billy's in the next room. Get like a, uh, Billy's a war vet who was accused of murdering 23 people or something like that. Get like a PTSD cutscene there. Yeah, I need these shotgun shells because uh, we're down to five and we need seven. And this is the long box puzzle. I have to keep Rebecca running the entire time just to save, you know, those two seconds or four seconds, I guess. So I, Rebecca, we hold the controller like this a lot. I don't know if you can see. You get to listen to Rebecca Wren as we push boxes. This isn't that hard, but you sure get a lot of time to think about screwing it up. And if you screw this up, you basically you can 
push the box like a little too far and then Billy can't get through kind of thing. You don't have to push the box all the way. It's pretty close. It's right here, you can screw it up. So, like, you need to, Billy needs enough space to be able to push. But you can't push it. Like, if you push it too far, he can't push it this way. If you don't push it far enough, he can't get in here. Still holding the controller, like, bizarre. And I'm gonna keep Billy here. I'm gonna try to keep Billy by the ladder. Rebecca's gonna go grab this thing. There we go. Got for Zambi. Okay, this has to be fast. Not the menuing, just... That leech guy can get Rebecca pretty easily. This is a tricky... Oh, I screwed it up. You have to... You could. You can run between all three of these zombies, but it's not, like... Super easy. Okay, this is bad RNG. This is the last hunter pair as well, and this is awful. Help. Oh. Oh! Oh, my... God. Oh, good. You have a save, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Zero. You know, I didn't realize all the prequels today would be uh, as typical as they are. I just can't remember. I haven't died here in forever. It's one of these two. So I do have a question about uh, rooms like that. Um... If you enter the room, see there's bad RNG, exit and re-enter, would that reset anything, or you just you get what you get? I don't know what that would do, because, like, Zero. when enemies move, they do end up in, like, a, a different... Like, I don't know how hunters work. If, like, that, hunt, that would work with hunters or not. With zombies, like, if the zombies are in it, you'll just get a completely different RNG. Right. One more. <laughs> All good. Resident Evil Zero. But yeah, this is... Usually, like, most of the time, that hunter in the back leaps. And when the hunter in the back leaps, it's going to give you room to go through. Neither of them left, and as you could see, they just they just made a blockade. Right. Um, you can sort of get through that oftentimes, because Billy has a lot of health, but not always. Where am I? Okay, this is close. It works out. But you get to see this cool outfit. Actually, wait. One more. Resident that's actually Zero. further back than I realized because of the whole box puzzle and all that. All good, all good. <laughs> you must survive in order to expose this nightmare. Hey, look, I made it past the... Uh... The box puzzle. <laughs> Yeah, and I made it past the Hunters. Isn't that amazing? I can't believe it. The Hunters just wow. gave you uh, new outfits. They did, yes. I'm supposed to be Billy right now. What am I doing? Sometimes a frog shows up here. He's not going to get you, but he's a little scary. So, um, just to kind of uh, play catch up for a moment here, um, does that save that you just loaded just take you past what the hunter room was? Yeah, it's the next room. All right. All right. 
which has like some flame rounds and a, a save and some healing. I have to keep mashing the shoot button with Billy there, because if I don't, Rebecca won't fire that last shot. I really don't know why. You stay here. Okay. Okay. It's funny when Rebecca's shooting the Magnum out because she goes flying backwards. Bye, Billy. Oh, that's bad RNG. I'm gonna have to dodge the zombie most likely. I don't know how she operates the box without Billy, but she does. Because she's in the box. She tries her best. Power of positive thinking. battery here, but we need Billy to get that, so... Or we need both of them to get that battery. Now we're actually gonna get to see a frog over here. The frog is like, um... So the, the tongue grabs you, tries to drag you in and eat you, and it's an instant kill, but you can shake them off. Like shaking off a zombie like faster. I like this. It's just kind of adorable for some reason. I could skip that, but... Okay, so I got Billy running on the stairs. That should distract the bug, so Rebecca's free to do what she needs to do, hopefully. Good bug. Basically, we need to... I guess make... Battery acid or something? for the battery so it works. And that's why we need the chemicals. So we can put the battery in here. Oops. Usually don't have that first aid spray there. Now... Billy go up. And Billy go down. I don't know why Billy can't just boost her and grab the card without the battery, but whatever. There's more puzzles. He tries his best out there. I always have trouble with this room. Like, moving two characters... Dodging, uh, like, dealing with those camera angles. I don't know why, though. It doesn't really seem like that complicated of a room. And we are coming up on the final boss, which is a nice mess of RNG. So I'm good. What I'm going to be trying to do is running Rebecca into the boss, and hopefully that'll cause the boss to miss his grabs, just like zombies would. Um... Whether it works out, we'll see. He should miss there. Whoops, that's not what I want. This is this is what you really don't want because I can't switch to Billy while he's grabbed. So I just have to wait for Billy to break free on his own. Okay, the... I don't know what Billy's health is at, because I don't... <laughs> I think he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Or she, I guess. It's the Queen Leech. Oh, wow, Billy almost died. That is okay, though. Because there is a lot of healing at the end. 
We need these mag rounds. And we'll reload the... Did I even... I didn't even use the key there, huh? Teamwork. And uh, I don't need these. What am I doing? I will take this, though, just for the safety. We swap to Rebecca. And this is the final boss, who... I don't really think we understand exactly how this thing works. It's very random, I'll say that. This is bad RNG. We wanted it to go backwards. Like that, like it just did there, but we wanted it to do it right away. If it does it right away, you can just keep shooting and you'll kill it without even moving. Now the idea here is Billy has to distract while Rebecca does the valves. But like, sometimes like it'll just take one shot and it'll be after Billy. And sometimes it'll just be like, this is good right here. This is what you want. But sometimes I'll shoot it like five times and it'll just keep going after Rebecca. Like this is actually, this is ideal so far. You don't have to be in the way right there, but I don't know why that happened, but whatever. Fine. Uh-oh. He gets to keep moving during those mini cutscenes, which can be really bad sometimes, like that. Because I didn't couldn't get a shot off because during that mini cutscene he kept she kept moving. stand here, usually it gets a little confused. I don't really know why. Click. Alright. I'm gonna do something here. You can actually heal Rebecca during this, you just can't control her. So. You can basically body block him at the end. Usually. For the most part. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot it anyway. And there it is. That is the end of the run. Wait, like time or? Yeah, I go time. I mean, my oh, the in-game yeah. timer is completely ruined anyway. All good, all good. We'll watch the final cutscene here, though. Yeah, we can just let it run. I mean, outside of the hunter, that wasn't that bad. Um, it was not. It was a good run. Billy. But yeah, I got enough safety saves. That I think I don't really have to worry too much about RE zero generally, unless I died somewhere really weird. I can't believe it has outfit changed. Feast on this. It did. Remember when cutscenes used to be like different than the in-game? Like there used to be like now all the cutscenes are just like in-engine these days. This game's funny though. Like like, you look at the features this game has compared to Remake's Remaster, and this one has way more features. It's got more outfits, it's got Wesker mode, it's got Leech Hunter, you know. 
Like, they made West Remote for the remaster. Like, and this game, it has like 20 outfits, while Remake has like four. It's a lot of outfits. Yeah, there's even a Jill Sandwich t-shirt. <laughs> All right, while watching this, though, uh, do you have any shout-outs you'd like to give to anyone? Really? I mean, Pessimism is the record holder. I was trying to get him something to do, but I, I guess I failed this week when I was de-resting. And then, obviously, you can find me at twitch.tv slash failmore. I run this. I run a lot of... I play a lot, I just I play horror games similar to Dices, and I also play some really... I, guess I, I play a lot of really die. old jank stuff. Martian Gothic. Or uh, Hellboy me. Asylum I Seeker. Is dead. Or I found a game yeah, by Queen. I'm just a zombie now. It's all Queen like music. The band? Yeah. They made a game. Oh. oh. All the, but it, it's, a, it's definitely going to get your VOD muted. But it's a well, fixed I, camera, yeah. pre rendered background, tank control game. The same engine as The Crow. I that sounds awful. It is. It's actually. It's pretty. Con it's actually pretty fun for stupid reasons. But yeah. Thank you. Jank games, horror games. Okay. That's what I do, in speedruns. That is it. On to the mansion where Rebecca forgets she killed the tyrant twice. I can't believe it. She's just tired. She's yes. very sleepy. All right. Hours. Thank you for doing that run of RE0. Uh, it was a good time. Hope everyone here enjoyed it. Uh, we still have one more run left for the night, which will be a pretty fun time as well. Uh, so we're going to go get ready for that. While we're going to be right back, uh, you should be right back as well. Walk around, touch your toes, don't die of blood clots. Uh, it is now time to be right back, everyone. So, yeah, go walk around. Be right back. All right, everyone, we are back from the break. Welcome back to the show. Uh, it's been a fun uh, show, a run of shows, run, show of runs. Been a bunch of fun runs tonight on tonight's show, and hopefully you have all been enjoying them. It's been interesting looking at the different prequels that exist, and uh, now we're going to be probably going to the most modern, uh, I think, of the games that have been happening. Uh, we kind of dove into a couple of classic survival horror games, and a lot of them were pretty difficult, uh, which is always fun. And the next one is absolutely uh, just as difficult as the last two. Uh, we're going to be doing some Little Nightmares 2 featuring Simo N. So feel free to take that away. All right, so hello everyone. My name is Simon. I run the Little Nightmares series, so mostly Little Nightmares One and Two on PC. And today we're going to be running Little Nightmares Any Percent 1.0.0. It's a little bit different than current patch in that we as speedrunners kind of were the post-launch playtesters of the game, and the devs decided to patch it and completely ruin it. So. That's why we have the down patch for the fastest version. And with me on the commentator's couch, I have... Hello everybody, I am NBZ, and I will be here commentating for Psy. Hopefully uh, not commentating on failed cafeteria skips, we'll see. <laughs> Your favorite area. Yeah. Well, if uh, we have a, a one minute unskip of a cutscene anyway, so... We might as well just start. Shall All I get right. your countdown? All right. Three, two, one. Actually, the IGT st timer starts somewhere else, but whatever. Yeah, it's easy to start. Uh, yeah, RTA, RTA runs start here already, so. This first chapter is Wilderness, and it's, is it, is it the shortest or is the last one the shortest with the skips? Um, I think this one is the shortest yet. Yeah, I think this is the shortest chapter. It's only about seven minutes. Right out of gates, I failed the first trick by not uh, jumping very far, so n you can at the last moment, before the cutscene ends, you can start jumping and then you will fly out of the TV. But of course, I just flopped on the ground instantly. 
So you're going to see a lot of jumping in this game because it gives you a 30% speed boost. And you cannot jump more than three times or more than two times or else you will get a stumble animation which will make you lower than walking speed. I'll try to avoid it as much as possible. Yeah, there are a few exceptions where a stumble is acceptable and actually helpful. And that's when you're in uh, certain slowdown parts where you can like trip on an object and stumble and it actually speeds you up faster than what you would normally be walking. This is the first skip, really, a uh, box skip. We're using some geometry in the background to jump into the foreground and up onto this ledge instead of dragging the crate across the screen. Somehow that second jump actually worked. I was very surprised, yeah. yeah. I already released because I didn't believe in it and then Mono actually grabbed on. A neat little skip here, instead of going up okay. and swinging on I that. That's a little bit too far to the right. Yeah, instead of swinging on the noose, we can just jump this gap just barely and jump right up. Yeah, a lot of precise jumps throughout the entire game. Yes. There are a lot, a lot of jump tricks in this game specifically. Little Nipes 1 has some jump tricks as well. So. There it's more for a lot of speed gain and here it's more for going for, for going far distances and such. Yeah, there are, yeah. I would say probably 75% are, 75% to like even 90% are all jump based skips. It's another little trick, so normally you would drop the log by uh, activating the trap, but you can just jump to the next area. There's also a cool little trick here that we're not going to do, but you can launch off of the trap and go out of bounds, and well, it's useless because you cannot go anywhere, but it's cool. It is very cool. This part, the area underneath the leaves is full of bear traps, which you find out if you watch me run this game, because I quite often step in them. But you will not be seeing that with Sai. Pretty clean. We are now entering the hunter's house. Who you will see shortly, but only briefly. The hunter lives. The hunter lives. Yeah. And now we're going to be coming across a memorable character on the first team. The protagonist even. Everybody's favorite. Yeah. So yeah, we're going to be dealing with her AI a lot. Even though she's, or she runs faster, she always manages to go slower than us. Except in one area. I don't know. And she'll often yeah. push you off ledges, or trip you, or just get you killed somehow. It makes perfect sense, lore-wise. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> perfectly positioned here, so you have to walk the least distance after this cutscene. Oh, your shoe went a little bit further. 
Yeah, I don't need this. But... Oh, you're not going to use this shoe skip, eh? Yeah, there are some new tricks. <laughs> This is Ben's key skip. Uh, we use what's called a super jump there. The game gives you a little bit of an extra boost. Normally you would have to get a crank, crank the body that's in the background up into the ceiling and jump from the body bag over to the key. But the game gives the player a boost from that body bag to the key. And we take advantage of that by jumping off the dresser at a specific point to hit that speed boost trigger, and it just takes us straight to the key. So here's another jump trick. I'll do it first. Nicely nice. done. That makes that look very easy. It is not. I have yet to do it, and I was the one that discovered the tech. So basically you can jump from, a, from the edge of a platform or whatever, and Normally, if you tap jump, you will do a slow, short hop, which doesn't have any utility, but if you do it from an edge, you can do a full jump without holding the jump key. And you can jump again and jump higher, but whatever, I need to do this skip first. Yes, this is the most dangerous skip in the game because it can completely lock you into a death loop. Or that you at a checkpoint that is much further back than what we would hope. But we're using the geometry of that gore pile to launch us. We want to see that bottle in the background, which we did. Restart, and now we are at the end of chapter one. So yeah, the bottle is the secret to all the checkpoints in the entire map, so you know where you have to where you where you can restart the checkpoint. You can just Pick the one that takes you to the end of the map. And so now we're in chapter two, the school. This level is loaded with skips. Um, yeah, more has, skips than the first game. Yeah, this, this chapter has more skips than the very first game. Here's the first of them. Normally we'd have to get six to boost us up. Here's another one. We usually have to swing first, then kick the TV. But if you get a super jump off the edge of the TV, you can actually kick the TV on the first swing. Yet another skip. This one is really cool. Doesn't even look like it's a skip. It looks like it's kind of meant to happen. But it's definitely not meant to happen. As you'll see, Six go down the stairs in the background to go catch you as you're supposed to jump across to her. So, the first TV. So basically, there are some lore stuff that I don't understand, but... There is some kind of connection with mono and TVs and such. So, every chapter after the first one, there's a TV that uh, stuns you and you have to solve some kind of weird puzzle that is sort of random. Yeah. We should really just try to find uh, the actual probabilities because I'm pretty sure it's not always 25%. Yeah, I've been curious about that. I need to test that. But it's essentially you're just pressing one of four different directions, up, down, left, or right. If the TV starts zooming in, you've got the right direction. And then you do that again, but it cannot be the same direction twice in a row. So if it was left the first time, it cannot be left the second time. And yeah, I feel like the third one, so in this, in the school, there's only two uh, options or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the third one in the other chapters that we do have to do, I feel like it is more often than not the first. The same as the first uh, one. I'm not sure, maybe it's just confirmation bias. And while we were already in 
the school chapter. Now you're actually in the school. And you'll notice we make good use of uh, checkpoint restarts to move six along a little bit faster and cancel cutscenes and animation. Yeah, the first game didn't have as much checkpoint abuse. Yeah, only one or two, right? Yeah, two, I believe. Both in the prisons. Yeah. This one has like 20. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. A lot. <laughs> Oops, I forgot the strats, but whatever. There are all sorts of little tricks like that one, like not climbing on the uh, pushed over locker or whatever. Yeah, normally uh, when you jump, you will do a little, a pretty quick climb animation. Uh, but if you jump at it at a certain angle at the right spot, then you can skip the, the climb animation and get straight on top. a weird one or you can just yeah. hold grab and it'll slam you against the wood but it won't kill yeah. you. Climbing gives you iframes I believe or lack of collision at yeah. least. And maybe locker skip? Yep. Of course. <laughs> so yeah if you jump into the trigger that normally locks your movements and if you are against the back wall you can jump again and it's Allows you to clip out of the locker or whatever. So normally you're supposed to roll out to the left, but in this case you skip that for basically no time cost. And this room, not a single person does it the same way as anybody else. Yeah. And it's my strat is <laughs> really dangerous. Fast. Yeah. Gotta save the time. For me, I slide under the table. How many stress are there? There's too many to count. Yeah. More than 10 at least. Yeah. This is a fun skip. Normally you're meant to sneak through this part instead of alerting the bullies. But we alert them, call them on over. Okay. Then, oh. That doesn't happen to me in like. 2,000 stem, okay, maybe not 2,000, but <laughs> it's like, actually, whatever, it's also not good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, just walk. Yeah, you have to walk here, otherwise. Yeah. We're trying to smash all three of the bullies underneath this bookshelf. And then, there's a fourth bully that comes in. Which, luckily, we can just leave it behind the bookshelf and it's fine. And then instead of the teacher chasing us, he just stands there and watches us. Yes, efficient pro programming. You don't need to add uh, AI when, you, when it's not required, I guess. Yep. <laughs> You're supposed to die every time. let this one live? Maybe. Yeah, we'll let them. Yeah, it takes too much time to kill. Yep. <laughs> or maybe you could do like a back hit while you are hitting the just, door. Yeah, I was just thinking that. But I think, I think it would be too far. Be close. Mm, maybe specific timing. Maybe for one frame it's possible. Who knows? This is an extremely difficult skip for me. Sai, it's not. Um, you just jump across that gap. If you land and you do not trip, then you can just jump straight to the rope. Otherwise, you have to sit there and wait. 
And then instead of pushing the board down, it comes right across. Straight into another really fun skip. This is library skip. We're gonna go up into the background along the back bookshelves. Instead of walking along the ground, climbing up a ladder, getting onto the shelf. We're just gonna go all the way along back here, jump across and skip a little chase scene trigger as well. Okay. Another restart checkpoint. I have no idea how this strat works, but it does. Just hang here and then First time you see her foot strike, you just start climbing up. Somehow, her AI switches to opening the door exactly as you make sounds, otherwise you are dead. Yep. Nice. Got the moon jump uh, into super jump. Yep, that was another moon jump. So uh, the let's... second, yeah, the second yeah. jump of the moon jump became a super jump, so we can and since the super jump is based on your speed and also height in the air. Yep. Yeah. Makes us go really far. Now we're on to the chess room. We're going to solve a little differently than intended. Normally, what you're trying to do is place pieces to checkmate the king, which is in the middle of the board, according to a diagram that is behind that scroll there that we just super jumped in front of, got a little speed boost off of it. Luckily, you can ignore the diagram and do it in reverse. Swap the queen and the rook, and it's still checkmate, which satisfies the requirement. Use the little baseboard jump up to the yeah. light, the and wall jumps. So that's another jump trick. So there are these baseboards around some of the maps. Most of uh, the time it's the hospital and the school. Maybe Pill City as well, but anyway, you can jump on those and jump again so you get some free heights that you if you cannot use moon jumps, then you can do that. Much, much harder than it looks, though. As long as you know the lineup. Well, we're going into the hardest oh, skip, I in my opinion. Moon jump. Oh, you were going to do for the going for the moon yeah. jump. Yeah. This is uh, the hardest skip, in my opinion, which is cafeteria skip. Also one of the coolest skips. We're going to alert this bully. Use it. Uh -oh. oh, not quite. Almost. We're using it to boost us up onto that table. Normally, we would fight all of these bullies, get the head of the last one, put it on, and walk through this next section. And going a bit too early on the return. Yeah. I just want to add really quick, um, this is a skip that requires everything to go right because uh, not only does the jump have to work, there's going to be like a bunch afterward that will uh, likely be explained, but just to say, uh, this is hard, this is hard. This is very hard. <laughs> um, and they can also soft lock you, soft lock you in. If you like it, it looks like we're going to get it here. We have to lure those two bullies in there, jump three times here, and launch. And nice. the little. Oh, that was close. <laughs> There's another wall jump there. Walk it with our head, otherwise, we would use the jar. Um, oh, okay. Interesting. That was weird. Okay, maybe 
Whatever, doesn't matter. Yeah, normally in that last room we would break the jar and then pick up an invisible jar and throw that jar. Bad RNG. Okay, there's a new strat here. I'm going to try it. All right, I'm excited to see this. The new strat that was just found by a Chinese player. Okay, whatever. Oh, missed it. One more try and then just do a normal strat. So what we're trying to do is knock this bottle off as we go. There it is. Nicely done. And she just got stuck there, staring at the bottle. Other way you can do it would be to do another wall jump, jump on the baseboard, jump back to the table, and then jump through the vent. I'm going to do risky strats here as well. Yeah. I practiced it. All right. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, you can also hit them on the front of the swing. I missed. Oh, that was so close, though. Oh my god, that makes me so scared. Okay, how? Did I get the checkpoint? Whatever. Yes, you can hit them <laughs> with the beginning of the swing instead of the end of the swing, but it's so stressful to even just watch it. Good old stress. Okay, that's interesting. I'm not sure how that works, but now since I did it more intended, I'm not sure how this checkpoint works. But the, the way I did it was more intended, so I guess I got it. Yeah. I wonder why it didn't trigger it before. I don't swim. Maybe I was too close. Mm. To be fair, my casual playthrough, I spent like a half an hour there, so... <laughs> I've been killed by that bucket far too many times, to admit. And then we rescue our good friend Six by dropping her on her head! We know what kind of superpowers she has in Little Nightmares 1, so... She's just a superhuman. Who knows? Maybe this is how she got her superpowers. <laughs> Spinal injuries. Yes. <laughs> Maybe, if, yeah, maybe her spine was already broken and we just fixed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, it's just, you know, we're chiropractors, no big deal. If we're lucky here, we can get an extra jump on the piano. It normally takes three jumps on top with six, get it to fall. We didn't get it this time. Sometimes you can get an extra free jump? I, I'm not sure how it works either. It just seems kind of random. Yeah. Let's see how the hook bends three times there and then the piano falls. Okay, let's see a complete strat that will completely fail as well. Ooh, a new one. I saw this from, from Cloud as well. Oh, oh this one's there? terrifying too. What? It doesn't make any sense. Push it over here. Bill's there. Die. Nice. So normally you would Restart the checkpoint so the aggro resets. Using a variation of one possible way to do it, you can also just run in there and challenge her directly. This is my, another yeah, interesting. Fun skip. 
Get a little boost from the little buddy there. Yeah. Normally we'd wait for six to boost us up over on that little white edge, but we're just gonna climb and ignore this box. Maybe get yeah. the spinnies? No, we didn't even get the spinnies this time. Uh, usually if you get some kind of weird fast climb that also clips through the box, sort of halfway kind of. A little weird, but if you clip in a certain way the game gets confused and just starts spinning you around. The only way to cure it is to jump. So if you're ever watching a run and you see somebody randomly spinning and jumping, that's why. Oddly enough, this part is actually easier on controller because you can just keep turning that on controller, but on keyboard you have to kind of like stutter turn. And instead of pulling that stool over, we use a little piece of geometry in the background, jump back, grab onto the books, and then climb on up. And now for the best part of the game. Totally just saw us there, but whatever. Let's just pretend <laughs> this, yeah. She's at her limit. Her net cannot go that far. Yeah. Also, the roof is not solid. We just fly over it. We just hoverboard it. Yeah, we found that out recently, looking yeah. uh, for a new skip. There's no collision on that roof at all. This is an interesting AI manipulation, so just run into this wall and hopefully Six just starts Zoom it. running, I guess. He's also pretty close. There's Man, no way you're going for this. No. Okay. <laughs> Not, not even consistent. Yeah, there's a there's a way to do a moon jump here as well, but it's it is not easy. Even the start of the skip is already like 50-50 before you've even done anything. Yeah. You have to basically how it works, you restart to or you exit the main menu and then the lid of the dumpster closes. Sometimes. That was a little super jump there to get onto the door handle. I'm wearing a skip six putting on her raincoat. Just about done with chapter two. this window. That's chapter two. Now we are on chapter three, the hospital. Scary. I think one of my favorite things about this game is that there are a lot of different hats that you can wear as runners. I mean, as anybody, but it's easy to differentiate runners because we all wear different hats. Yeah, 
what hat does Astral wear again? Well, Astral, you know, used to wear the hat that I wear. <laughs> uh, but we had a competition and I won, so I got to keep the hat. So Astral wears the post person hat. So those super jumps are the fastest in the game, as far as I know. And also the sketchiest. Yeah. Controller issues. <laughs> I've had to switch the keyboard because <laughs> if I do it on controller, it just pulls me off into the background and I die. I'm always alone at the top with my keyboards only. <laughs> yeah, I would say I would say the majority of us all use controller and keyboard. Handy dandy flashlight, which we use just so much. Kind of looks like we're slower with flashlights, but actually, it doesn't matter. Which I was very frustrated with because I ran in the dark for so long thinking that it was faster than using the flashlight. Come to find More, out that I could yeah. just use the flashlight. I still have not gotten that one. Three jumps over to this TV, and this is the second TV, I believe. So I zoom in. So we have to do one of three directions, another zoom in, and then one of three directions again. And in we go. Then we have a restart coming up for another trick. We are going to be setting up uh, probably the most useful skip in the game, I would say, with a exit the game restart. See somebody saying the mannequin part, but I have bad news or good news. I'm not sure. You're not going to get to see the mannequins. Also, Sai, make sure to restart your Discord stream too. All right. Thank you. Now, if you run current patch, you could see the mannequins, potentially. But now there's a new skip, again, by the same Chinese runner, filed 7777. Um, found a way to skip it on current patch, even though it was patched out. Pretty much every skip that yeah. was patched out, there's another way to do it instead. It's a recurring theme. All of the... Patches just lead to more difficult skips. Yep. Meanwhile, NN1 is just completely unpatched. And this game only had one patch, right? Yeah. And then they just left. And then we found new strats. All the bunny for a little bit there, right before the key popped up. Yeah, it's, I'm still... You never stop thinking, why don't you just swap it when doors closed? But apparently that's too hard. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, basically, if you have a clean game state or whatever, so you haven't exited the main menu before, so you, you can duplicate the views. So we lo just loaded the left side of the hospital, of the start of the main app at least. And there's a views there, so by exiting to main menu while you haven't Exit the main menu yet in this game instance or whatever. Somehow it allows you to get a checkpoint where you already have the views of that side. And then on this side, there's some glass at the end of this. Yeah, I guess you have to run around and get the views to break this window. But if you use that glitched views, you can just open it from the wrong side, so you just skip the entire thing, basically. Yeah, normally there's a fight with a hand in here. Which you can also skip, by the way. You can just... Yep. You can just run past it. And if you pick up the wrong views there, you're in trouble. Because <laughs> I believe that breaks the... the skip. Yeah, you lose about two minutes of having to... Oh, it's invisible again, it doesn't matter. Oh, I've never had the invisible fuse. So yeah, well, somehow one of them is invisible, but it's still there, so... And I know where it is. So I don't have to restart the checkpoints to make it okay. visible. I guess I could have done that. I've actually never seen that. It happened on another marathon as well in the Japanese community or so. I don't oh, wow. know. I was there and I said, hey, it's invisible. You don't have to restart the game. I, I'm not sure what they were going to do, but... I'm pretty sure they, they were going to do the entire chapter all over again because they thought they messed up the skip. But oh, no. Actually, it was just invisible, so I... I said it just in time. This is one of, I would say, one of the most hated fights in the game. Also consistent. We're gonna lure this hand out. Ooh, hit it. And then, hit it again. Or it can get back and hide away. That triggers this hand, jump out. We hit it as soon as it jumps. The other hand is confused. It's stuck in the door. Fill it. And then we just have to hit this one two more times. Very smooth fight. <laughs> you hit six in the back of the head with the board, too. <laughs> That's what you get. <laughs> Time to meet the doctor. Okay, I'm not going to try that strat, even though <laughs> I could do it. This one is consistent. We're gonna jump. Twice okay. here. Why is he doing that? Whatever, it doesn't matter. It'll be fine. It'll still be stuck. He's just kind of chilling there. Hmm, that noise. What made it? Okay. If I hit this. Nice. Have to... I have enough time. Can be close. He's not aggro. Oh, he is aggro. You know what? I'm going to chill here. Yeah, just to be safe. You cannot get us in the top left corner. And if we wait for that grab, quickly go over here and make it up. Okay, There's another new strat here. I'm going to try it. And I'm accidentally jumped too soon. 
This is the morgue drop skip, which I fail so often. If you grab that edge, you live. If you don't, you die. And they patch it, but you can live anyway. I'm not sure how it works. Yeah, it seems like you can go around the left-hand side of the kill Yeah, plane. they patch the right side, so you can go over the left side now. Right, Ooh. set up the skip. You can jump on those hinges. That's... I have time for a normal way. But you can also jump on the hinge in the, the top left cabinet or whatever. Yep, and then jump around to the key. But it's pretty tough. Just in time. So this probably the most precise skip, maybe. We used to be able to, or how we used to do it was you first pull out that body, and then you step into the container or whatever it is. Yeah, and that would trigger six to run to that container to pull you, which gives you a specific amount of time to get the key and get back inside before she pulls it. If you're too slow, she pulls it without you in it, and you have to wait for her to push it back through for you again. So yeah, in the new strat, we just go for it immediately, and then there's a really tight window you have to hit, basically. This is the wonderful butt skip. By walking, you avoid him hearing you, so... Oh. Yeah, I've been heard that. And we're gonna chill here. Wait for the butt. Wait for the butt to drop. There it is. And we can take off running with the fuse. Oh, you don't my strat. <laughs> Love it. If you run for a short period of time and then you do like a half crouch, you can actually make it out of that room without him seeing you. Otherwise, you just get into this room and restart check. Okay, so your jumps are nerfed in this particular area. Do like 10% faster and normally it's 30%. So presumably, so you cannot get ahead of six. You can still get ahead of six, but that's beside the point. Yeah, for some reason she got stuck. Oh, I'm not going to die here. No, I'm not. Oh, I'm surprised. Oof. You can just uh, use the force to kill you there, but I was a little bit too far for it to register. There are six. Popping in. And just kind of walk through here. Interesting. You saw him disappear. Yep. <laughs> so you burn him, so six resets or whatever. Her AI kind of becomes active again, and you can just grab her right away. Otherwise, she sits there and warms her hands yeah. up. <laughs> and if you don't burn, she doesn't really respond or something. That is the end of the hospital chapter, chapter three. On to the longest chapter, Hail City, chapter four. Faster to turn around there and go grab six stand. Otherwise, she stands there for a little bit. So now we're going to find the true power of the flashlights. Oh. You might have seen it already, but basically you can just use it to 
cancel most animations except for falling and maybe some obscure stuff. So normally you're supposed to lock in place but you can just whip out the flashlight and run. And you can see he was already in the TV the whole time. Never get that fast climb there. I always get the fast climb there. <laughs> this is why you hold the world record. Maybe. I feel like it's still getting all the skips, which is more important than uh, random fast climbs True. at the moment. But I'll blame it on that. Are you going to get soft locked? Of course. <laughs> this is the wonderful elevator skip that I hate almost as much as cafeteria skip. Normally there's a whole puzzle here where you have to ride the elevator up, climb up on the right side, go in the office, get a key, unlock it, send the elevator down, then jump back on top of the elevator. But oh, we do it a little different. Do a little jump there, climb up here, trigger the elevator, fall down, use the flashlight to cancel our fall, and jump straight over to the elevator. And that's it. Easy. Easy. Except sometimes you grab the edge of the elevator and you get soft locked and you can't do anything. And sometimes you fall through the roof of the elevator. Yep. <laughs> it's painful. You lose a minute, at least. Yeah, you get to redo the entire skip. Mm -hmm. uh, I could do a new one. I was wondering. Okay, and I didn't even get the checkpoint. Okay. Dang. Scams. So what we're trying to do there? There's a cut. There's actually three different ways to do this part. Um, one is to bounce off that. The, the front of the railing and get a checkpoint that's there. Another is to turn the crank a little bit. There you go, you got it. Uh, to land on top of the railing and just walk over top. Or you can swing for the foreground a little bit and actually make it just barely on the ledge. Let's see. Okay. This is the oh. only wall jump I can consistently get. <laughs> Hold up, I want it. Get it, it's fun. Okay. Oh, that was it. Wait, maybe I should walk instead. Yeah. There it is. We don't need six of help. What? We kind of do, but you just stop. <laughs> you, so normally you're supposed to boost up the rabbits. You can skip that, and then if you're fast enough, you can get the boost anyway, so you get the head start on the ladder. Yep. Kind of nice. You actually have to read it in that case. This is always fun. This next skip. Yes. Sometimes you just don't get it. I've only gotten it once, but I've only tried it a couple times. This is rubble wake up skip. We're attempting to skip an entire cutscene. And, and more, honestly. Yeah. It's kind of useful. Because we keep the flashlight a bit longer, so... There's some opportunity, and I'm... Okay. Um... Game? Hello? Alright, that's... Hmm. You can probably try it a couple times. So we're gonna run toward the background where there's a board that we can just barely stand on. And then we're going to run, tap down at a specific point. Oops, I didn't tap it for long enough. Again. 
and I died, okay. You die? You nice, can die? Nice game. Yeah, you can die. I didn't know that. Oh, I don't get that one often. Oh. Usually you just get it or you don't, you don't die. Yeah, because you normally listen for the body to hit the ground. That's your cue that you got it. Yes, nice. Yeah. So, instead of waking up in the rubble, we can skip that. Leave six stranded, trapped under some stuff. And completely ignore it. And keep our flashlight. Normally your flashlight gets broken and stays on the ground there. But because we skip that cutscene and skip falling into that specific trigger, we keep our flashlight for a little bit longer, which lets us do a couple more tricks. Also, you get infinite jumps in and TV holes, yeah. worlds, etc. Here's another flashlight trick. You cancel the cutscene, or you cancel your stun in the cutscene, and you can start running before you normally would be able to. But it's hard because you can't actually see where you're going. Now we're going to taunt her. By spamming the flashlight for no reason. <laughs> Is it possible to get soft locked under the bed? Uh, no, if you do this skip, you get stuck. Gotcha. And you cannot even restart the checkpoints. Oh, wow. Or not immediately. It's a quick menu exit, and it's fine. Hmm. Don't do that on Switch. It will take like a minute or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely don't do it on the Switch. <laughs> but whatever, in, on consoles it's RTA, so it's not worth it to do it on console. have some pretty cool TV powers. Instead of doing the little puzzle each time, we just go straight through the TV and out a different one. Definitely do two rotations here instead of one. Flashlight can cancel the fall animation there. We're two dips away, I think, from keeping the flashlight all the way until the final boss. Well, I guess kind of final boss. Um, um, mm -hmm. Final boss fight, I guess. And if we could keep it to that point, we would literally skip the entire fight. But there's two doorways stopping us. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> I to do the chair, the chair thing. Yeah, you can full jump all the way out and then grab that chair right as you're about to hit the ground and it'll cancel your fall. Or you can bounce off the very edge of the TV and that will also cancel your fall animation. But now we've picked up the remote, which gets rid of the flashlight. But 
the thing with these puzzles is that you don't really need the remote for most of them. This one is yeah. kind of interesting, I guess. Yeah, there are like three or four different strats to do this one. One is to pull it over there and just climb up the cart. Um, I cannot figure that one out. So I turn or I move the cart, restart checkpoint instead of going through the TV, and then jump across the cart because the cart stays in place. And this is my other nemesis, balcony skip. As long as you don't bonk, you can just jump. I think in my PB, I've, or well, on my PB for patch 1.0, I lost a minute there, <laughs> just failing that jump over and over again. That person with the other TV, so they jump off the roof, and then we can teleport across. So I figured out the hard way that you do need to actually do inputs in that. Yes, that yes, scene. you do. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't hold the grab button or do inputs, it literally just drops you off that's the like edge. It's like the only one as well. It's so weird. <laughs> Why did they do it like that? I figured that out the hard way too. <laughs> Going to just hold right and see what we get. All right. So we get the checkpoint anyway. Yeah. Nice. Nice. All cancel. And now TV skip, which is atrociously difficult, but side's gonna make it look easy most likely. Um, almost. Okay. Almost. So there's an awning that sticks out there that is meant to stop you from going in that window. But there is a way around it. Just like that. It's about eight seconds. Part still gives me a heart attack every time. That is the furthest I've ever seen that person killed from the switch. Also, the furthest possible distance. Yep. <laughs> Pops to get down the chute, and instead of dragging this luggage or package, I guess, over, we're gonna use a super jump. Straight to the switch. Up in our elevator, and yet again, we are going to say no to an elevator puzzle. We're going to chill in front of these bars and just completely ignore the puzzle and magically. Oh, look! Here we are, straight through the bars onto the second floor. Oh, you almost got fast box. Occasionally, the doll falls off which makes the box lighter and pull quicker. Is this chair skip skip? I think what it's called? Yeah. yeah. It's a little... The buggy. geometry is bugged. Yeah. You can kind of jump up a little bit higher there. Which way do you go again? Oh. I was wondering if you were going to do yeah. that, yeah. I was wondering if it was in front or in the back. Oops. It was in the back. The skip is either death, off lock, or amazing. Because oh. it saves a ton of time. It skips a really obnoxious puzzle. And there it is. You can get soft locked on that edge, it'll just stay there. Kind of like half hanging on it. Or you'll 
hit the uh, hit the floor and die. Okay. Also a new strat here. Let's see if I can get it. This new strat is terrifying. Normally we would lure them over to the other TV. Um, nope. Oh. I have to go a bit more left and then he starts an animation. Okay, one more try. I have to hit the wall, I guess. And the TV remote is really finicky for turning on the TV. Oh, okay, maybe I'm just too far away to fix Okay, actual last try. I think you want to be closer to the yeah. to his feet, maybe? If I remember correctly. Okay, whatever. Just, just do it. Intend this route. You can also get behind the fence where all the people are, but there's nothing really to do there. You know, fun little chase scene. Basically, the idea, the idea of that TV skip is that you trigger the one, the closest viewer to um, turn around, and then that gives you a small window to get through the TV. Yeah. Basically, and then you actually have to do it, and it doesn't work. <laughs> Go and rescue our friend Six from the TV world. Not or not? <laughs> Force grabs an axe. And then hope you don't get trolled by a door. You have to stand far away. If you are too close, the axe will just go through it. Or it will bonk off of it. <laughs> so I guess maybe it's just super realistic and the hatchet doesn't have enough force to uh, go through the door or something. I don't know. A little too tall, I guess. Walking diagonally along this board, I believe, is faster. Technically. Sort of. Oh my god, we need to ban Algometrical from chat. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, we pull the stool across the room, jump up on that, hop up here, but there's just enough height in the background there to jump up on the ledge without the stool. And this is the only place in the game where keyboard is heavily disadvantaged because these carriages are not aligned with the world axis. It's atrocious on controller too, I promise. <laughs> yeah, it forces you to go in a direction, but it doesn't actually help you. Nice. So normally it slows down here, but you can actually jump over the slowdown trigger, which is what Sai did here, which is faster for RTA, but it's actually the same amount of time in uh, game time because it slows down the timer as well and when you so are slower. The entire game basically. Yep. Since the timer uses that to measure time, then it slows down with it.
by exiting the main menu here, it makes the remote that gets broken. It makes it so that it is grabbable. Otherwise, you would not be able to pick it up. But because we can pick it up, we can do the stutter walk, which is actually much faster, much, much faster than what we would normally be walking in this section. Because we're walking injured and we're barely moving. Throw the remote up. Ooh, that was a launch. Yeah. A little far away. Continue our stutter walk. Which looks slow, but I promise you it is much faster. He's so dramatically slow in this part. But it's still not as bad as Little Nightmare's one ladder climb. That takes over a minute. Okay. And then if you die, you have to do it again. That ladder is also slightly longer. Most difficult boss fight, boss fight in all of gaming, by the way. By far. You have to hold one or two buttons. We're holding up, right, or up and right, up and left, and up. And on keyboards, you can just hold up the entire time. Yep. Hold up and then press left, right. Yeah. Depending on what direction. But this is the fight that we would be able to skip if we could get the flashlight here. Uh, we would skip this entire fight, the entire scene, everything. It'd be a massive time save. Yeah, the level end trigger is actually pretty close. But you can just run up to it. Skip this entire cinematic. Yep. It will save, life. I think, like two minutes, two to three minutes. Probably. Well, we're just about done with chapter four. We'll be going on to chapter five, which is my favorite chapter, because it's pretty. Because I hope you're all ready for everything to be perfect. Flash pink. Yeah, purplish pink. Do our little floating animation there. This is the one TV hallway. Well, it's not really the TV hallway, but one hallway where we do not have infinite stamina. Cannot continuously jump. We have to do our two jumps. We're actually going to do these puzzles a little different than intended. We're going to mess them up on purpose because it will warp us closer to the other side. So instead of running to that other door, we're going to go back through it. And then that saves us one trip over to this door. But what you're supposed to do there is to follow the sound listening for the music, wherever it's loudest, that's the correct door to go through. And also, mono glitches out a little bit. Yes. Yeah, you'll see some particles coming off of mono when you're at the correct door. <laughs> and normally you would go up left first, 
because that's where you're supposed to go, but actually if you open the door first you can stay close to the walls and save a bit of time. One of the scarier jumps in the game. There it is. Instead of pushing that board down, which would take up quite a bit of time. We're moving back toward that wonderful music box that we heard earlier when we first found Six. It's a little bigger. And so is that. Six is a, a bit bigger. A few more joints. Just casually walking in here. If you touch Six here, you die. If you touch her foot, her elbow, her hair, he will kill you. Her arms are actually fine. So in this oh, the case. arms are okay. Nice. Yeah. So you can push against them. Definitely the skin is not allowed. You just fall dead. You just drop dead. Basically. We actually have infinite jumps here. We can just jump as much as we want. Don't have to worry about it. There's no stumble mechanic. For some reason, we're not quite sure. Probably to help players along if it because it's a little bit of a tighter chase. But this is the most important part of the game. We have to save the bowl. So we grab the bowl through the table, set it down gently, and then Should we save safe. the bowl. It means it's a valid run. If you don't save the bowl, we will reject your run. That's not true, but you will get a note. Minus style points. Minus style points, yes. Except on my last run, I saved the bowl and then Fix still flipped through the table and smashed it. Restart the checkpoint. Yeah, we strategically call six here. Uh, at certain points to get the quickest path to the music box to hit it with the axe and then restart checkpoint as soon as we hit contact with that. On the first door world, you go right and on the second one, you go left. Or, Some, <laughs> or you go the other way and lose a lot of time. You spend your entire time, you know, you spend two or three months running this game doing it the complete opposite, only to find out a year and a half later when you go back to the game that it was supposed to be the other direction. So you get teleported here for going left and then you end up on the other side. Well, I guess it's sort of, on, sort, of sort of overflowing your yeah. position. Yeah. This one's the trickiest one, but it's usually not too hard. And we do not restart checkpoint here. Yes, Eleven is indeed the name of our cat. <laughs> One more hit here on this music box to finally finish off Big Six. Not Big Hero Six, Big Villain Six. Turning Six to her normal, still ridiculously powerful self. got another chase where we can jump infinitely. Don't have to worry about stumbles. However, this chase scene is very weird sometimes. You get stuck on things, 
Dix can die and teleport die again, in front of and you. Die again. Teleport, <laughs> die. teleport. Yep. We, yeah. She reveals her true powers here. And she can also teleport in front of you mid jump and knock you down and make you die. So I'm not sure why they specifically added. Oops, I jumped. They specifically added. Infinite jumps to that hallway thing. Yeah, it's not really a hallway, but it's whatever. To that section, not short and not after it. Even though yeah. you don't need it, because if you actually use it, you end up way too far ahead and Six keeps dying and teleporting all over the place. So yep. <laughs> it's, it's an interesting uh, design choice. We see the true monster of the game, Six letting us die. It's called a trust fall. <laughs> So here, it's the same thing as in the X world. You have to go left to go right. We're gonna do three, uh, two jumps. The left, run back to the right, and that spawns in our ending platform. And time is and coming time. up. As soon as we touch time. the chair now. GG. Nice. Nice run. Very well In that case, the, the estimate was indeed pretty accurate. That it was. Yeah, so I can, I could still try some more difficult strats. While well, we're uh, going out the ending here and uh, kind of wrapping it up, do you have any shout outs you'd like to give to anyone? Um, shout out to Mythic Cheese for being very active in the continued efforts to get this game sub hour. And shout outs to the Little Nightmare speedrunning community in general, of course. Uh, yeah, that's it, I guess. And if anyone wanted to find you on like Twitch or anywhere or check you out, where can they find you? Um, so basically my name and then the underscore. And that's my Twitch link. So. Sounds like a pretty I, good place to, yeah. to find you. I'll link that in, uh, in chat. But I do want to say uh, thank you for doing the run. It was uh, definitely a fun run to see. Yeah, it's been here once before, I believe. I think Larks I ran it on Hotfix once. Yeah. And it's also been at the last AGDQ, I believe. Yeah, I Kenny, think so. Kenny, uh, yep. And uh, Larks was on the couch for that as well, so. Yeah. Well, I do want to thank you both again for being here. It was a fun showcase. I always like watching uh, Mono uh, launch 80 feet and then uh, <laughs> land on the peach. It's always a fun time. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah and thank you once again. Uh, as well, uh, we'll, watch, we'll wait a little bit to watch the ending here because I do know we have something uh, coming on up. We do want to see the end of this nice run. Pretty much getting a story play to really fast. Thin man all along. I can't believe it. And then you get a fun surprise where if you get to the credits, you can't get out of them and it's 15 <laughs> minutes of credits. Oh no. That's is that also in Little Nightmares 2? Is in Little Nightmares 1. It's unskippable. Wait. Yeah, you can't skip it. Is the cutscene with the TV at the after this or the end of the credits? Um, credits, I think. Oh, never I mind. Think I, <laughs> well, I there's collect, the thin man. <laughs> and I didn't collect all the glitches. All good, all good. So it probably won't show up anyway. It's all a secret. right. Well, I do want to thank you both again for being here, and thank you everyone for yep. watching. Uh, this has been Speedruns from the Crypt. Uh, we do this show every two weeks. We have a bunch of horror games on. It's fun stuff in general. 
So I do want to say thank you once again, and we will be back in about two weeks, as I said. Uh, I've been your host, McDysis. Uh You can find me at, uh, you know, everywhere pretty much under the name McDysis. Uh I don't know if you're still on the game screen, if we're on the me screen, it's somewhere in this corner. Uh, that's where you can find me. I talk a lot about how these shows are made and stuff like that. Uh, I do want to say thank you for watching, and as well, if you're watching us over on YouTube, come over to twitch.tv slash gamesdonequick uh, if you're interested in looking at our live content, starting most weeknights around 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I do want to say thank you once again, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day and or night, and I hope you enjoy the show prequels. Have a safe night!